What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream of Let's Get Nuts on the Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Guys, today is our last show of 2023, and it's an extra large one. We've got Star Trek news. We've got Hot Toys news. We're going to talk a little bit about Christmas presents from when we were a kid. We're also going to talk about some of those Mondo, the animated figure teases that we saw yesterday. A little bit of J&D, but not necessarily the Joker figure himself, more so kind of that pricing controversy that we're now talking a little bit about within the community, as well as entertainment news and a whole lot more. So guys, with that said, let's get nuts. Hold on to your butts. Come on, let's get nuts. I give you a Thomas Showdown. Where are we going? Alrighty. So, of course, we have Santa Claus himself here in the chat with us. Pete from Only Fools and Collecting, a division of Collecting Weekly. Good to see you, buddy, back. Welcome back to the last show of 2023. Yeah. How are you doing today, buddy? Thanks, mate. Yeah, I had to be here for this one. Uh, yeah. I want to wish all the folks a, a, a very Merry Christmas and uh, really looking forward to the show. Absolutely. we got a big one today, Pete, and I know it gets a little late your time, so if later don't you have to cut out, let me know. Nah, but... don't worry about it, mate. I've only got, well, four days of work next week, but, you know, we're starting to That's starting right. to uh, ease off for, for Christmas, so yeah, it should Thank be goodness. fine. I'm yeah. hoping the paint industry does the same thing for me, but it's been like <laughs> balls to the wall or nuts well, I'm not to the sure wall. The, I guess I'm, not sure the industry, I'm not sure the industry is easing off, but I intend on easing off a little bit. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Last last time I was on stream with you, I was pretty tipsy. I'm not going to lie. This time I've remained sober so I can host the show, but yeah. buddy, I'm happy to see you here, uh, of course. Uh, we've got Shane from 1-6 Figure Focus here in his Christmas sweater as well <clears> with no collection display behind him still. You hate to see <clears> it. <throat> But I'm happy to have you here, buddy, for the last show of the year. Good to see you, man. What's up? How's it going? Cool. Thanks for the invite. Uh, always. Always great to have a chat with yourself and uh, Pete and Thomas. So, yeah. Ready to get nuts? Absolutely. I got some new stuff to talk about this week, stuff that we haven't had a chance to to dive in together yet, you or Pete, uh, for, like for the three of us. So, yeah. should be keeping it fresh today for all the, the members and all the people watching live. So, And I don't know if anybody noticed, but I am rocking my Let's Get Nuts sweater today. It's beautiful. Which, it's a little short. I got the extra large one. I'm a I'm six foot two. It feels just a little bit short. I could have probably gone the double XL. So if anybody's considering buying one, and you're about my size, uh, something to consider there for sure. Cool. But last but not least, we have one more fantastical panel member with us now. He's a little under the weather, so he's going to stay off camera today. But you may know him as Classy Thomas or SpongeBob Square Balls in the chat with us <laughs> and here in the panel as well. Good to see you, buddy. I like that you switched your SpongeBob over to the Christmas hat and Santa one. So yeah, he's, uh, he's got the Christmas spirit. Hi, <laughs> right, Thomas. You're right, mate. Hey, how's it Heck yeah, buddy. Heck yeah. Yeah, Pete. Um, Everybody in the chat, let's uh, send Thomas some well wishes. He was feeling a little under the weather before. He was starting to get on the mend and then yeah. back, not feeling the greatest Absolutely. once again. Hope, so hope, hope for you better for Christmas, hope mate. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. Thank you. Absolutely. Guys, we have a big show today, but I wanted to first dive into <clears throat> Christmas time because, like I said, next Sunday is Christmas Eve and the Sunday after that is New Year's Eve. I don't think it makes much sense to host a show those days. No. So this will be the last time we have a chance to talk about Christmas. And I talk to you guys a lot every week about, you know, that nostalgic punch in the chest every time I see figures like Power Rangers or Batmans or any of those things. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share some funny old pictures. I reached out to my mom the other day <laughs> and said, hey, you got to have at least some old pictures of me with some toys right so she sent me hey. these ones uh this was awesome so stretch armstrong on the left hand side <laughs> that guy was filled with corn syrup back in the day he was an awesome awesome toy and in the same christmas i unboxed not one but two power rangers in the old like diamond shaped box mm -hmm. uh, which i still now have i went out and repurchased the black one not that long ago <laughs> and i've got it in my collection uh, but it's funny because you know when I think back to Christmas, I think, man, I thought I was older when I got this these gifts. You know, like in my mind's eye, I was older. How old are look, you there? Do you know? I've got to be about nine, uh -huh. maybe ten. 
yeah somewhere in that range still working on teeth and where they just haven't all come together yet maybe that's hard <laughs> but uh but definitely never thought i'd have a beard never thought i'd be still talking about toys you mm-hmm. know all of these years later uh yeah. as energetically as i do but Pete, I wanted to go to you first because, you know, when I think back to Christmases, when I think back to some of my favorite Christmases, the Power Ranger one for sure is one that sticks out in my mind for some reason. I just just thought those were so cool. Do you have a Christmas that you can recall where you got a toy that you were just like, this made Christmas for me? Any recollection? Yeah, I just want to say that I love the pictures, mate. And uh, if I'd I'd have have dug some out, I'm sure I've got some old Christmas pictures. Um, I'll have a look. But I like the fact that I can see out of your window there um, to yes. the woods. And there's like a big lake or something behind you. Yeah, so we lived yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, right wow. off uh, like an old dirt road and right above a mill pond. So when you go out onto my deck, so this room, if you turn to the right, there's a like a deck. And you can look right out over the mill pond there. It's beautiful. Yeah, Very beautiful. Quite amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it was was um, I was born in... in 75 so for me it was all about the the, the original run of the, all the star wars figures um so i suppose it, it's got to be the millennium falcon Ooh. um i can't remember exactly what year i got it but it was probably 82 83 maybe um i mean that was just special like proper yeah. you know i mean that that to me i had a lot of the figures and stuff but that to me was the was the piece to have and uh yeah i absolutely loved that thing um, Any idea whatever happened to it, or do you still have it kicking around? No, I don't. Unfortunately, no. What, what happened was, um, it's unfortunate, really. My my mum uh, worked at a preschool, so it was very easy for me and my brother to sell off our old toys because she'd just take them into preschool and sell them. So we got to an age where we were into something else, you know, and we were like, oh well, you can go and sell these at, at work and uh, we'll buy something else. So, yeah, they, they went. So, I mean, you know, um, had no idea that they would be um, worth anything. And I probably wouldn't have cared as a kid. I just wanted some money for something else. So, um, you know, it'd be nice to think that they're off somewhere. But, um, yeah, I mean, I had great fun with them. I really enjoyed them. And, um, yeah, it was, it was all very much about um, the Kenner Star Wars line for me. Heck yeah, buddy. Awesome call out, especially the Millennium Falcon. I do wonder what happened to that. I wonder if it's literally sitting in a collector's collection I hope somewhere, so. you know? I like hope so. Repainted, I think, maybe re yeah, together a little bit. Yeah, I looked after it. I think it was in yeah. pretty good nick, you know, when it, cool. when it went, so. That'd be cool. Shane, same question for you, buddy. Does, is there any, like, old school Christmas toys or anything that kind of stands out in your mind? Something that's that nostalgic punch when you think back to past Christmases have gone by? Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, it must have been Christmas 89 or 90 because um, it was the, um, it's, it wasn't Kenner. I can't remember the, the, the name of it. Uh, Toy Biz, I think it was. Uh, Batwing from the 1989 Batwing oh, nice. for Batman movie. That, so it was, it, it wasn't the Jazz Inc. put it that way. Like, but it, <laughs> it yeah, was slightly like, smaller. <laughs> I, I remember, I remember it being, like I, I, you know, I, I was young enough, old enough to know what Christmas was, and I remember, like, you know, well, we got we've got the nice clothes on today, like, you know, we're going to have <laughs> a fancy dinner, and you know, I was just blown away by this thing because I had the little Batman and the Joker as well. And I remember the Batman like <laughs> looked nothing like Michael Keaton, but and I like, can still I can still remember the feel of this cape in my fingertips. How you it had like a little U-shaped, flexible, um, kind of like a like a paperclip kind of thing, and you you, you clipped on the back of him. And it was like an actual material cape, mm-hmm. and he had this little uh, from the utility belts. This little spring-loaded uh, grapple came out, and the Joker actually had a little, a little like you know the the the, the little flower, yeah. And it came a little tank of water ah. and a little, <laughs> uh, a little like it's, it's tube it. that you could connect <laughs> into the back and square people with. I and that. the that bat awesome. wing. I, I live in I live the place where I grew up in Ireland was a place called Shannon has a very very small airport so I was obsessed with ending that flu and the bat wing like y- y- to fly it around there was a little handle like a gun underneath so you couldn't see your hand when you're using it but there's a trigger on it <laughs> and when you pull the trigger the little pincers come out mm. but uh and I specifically remember mom being really busy with things and dad was really getting ready to or, you know getting uh, everything organized for the meal and uh um dad had toilet roll and he goes here put that upstairs in the bathroom and i had the thing in my hand and he, he shoved it into the little pincers 
and I flew it off the toilet and oh, I put it in the job it. to do like that. I was like, do you have anything else for me to pick up? But yeah, it was, yeah, that was, nice. uh, it was 89 or 90. But uh, yeah, that, that was, that's a warm Brilliant. one. Yeah. That's awesome, buddy. We got to be about the same age because I definitely remember all of those as well. So that's that's super yeah, nostalgic. I think, I think I've got about three years. Yeah, I, I turned forty yeah. a few weeks ago. So uh, yeah, a couple of years. Yeah. Saved, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me it was the Ninja Turtles. It was like all that old school Batman mm-hmm. stuff, and then Power Rangers a little bit later uh, on as I got older. Clearly in life, uh, as you can see from the photos, Classy Thomas, you're still a kind of a big kid at heart. Let's be honest, either way. <laughs> but when you think back uh, to childhood, there is there any Christmas toys that stood out to you? Something that really gives you that nostalgic punch when you when you think of it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, I I was born in '65. So this is um, actually something from probably, I want to say it had to be in the late 60s or very, very early 70s, mm-hmm. but uh, my Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. and I, um, I have those. I, I st- still have them, as a matter of fact. It's downstairs in my basement, and cool. um, mm. you can still pop them. You can still use the controls and... And um and make the hip fly up and everything like that. So, you know, it's this is a simple a little classic crank, toy. Yeah. Yeah. Classic toy, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I and as a matter of fact, I have I have very few toys remaining from my from my childhood, but I kept that one and I kept an old ratty um panda stuffed <laughs> animal, which well, that one wasn't wasn't a Christmas present, but it's something I I won at the fair, and um, and and that gift actually, um, that one it actually um, kind of started my love for um, for pandas and and other fuzzy, cute, fluffy, um, fluffy such um, animals. So yeah. That's awesome, buddy. That's awesome. And it's it's funny too, right? When you think back to like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, for example, I, I've seen these posts now, you know, and you hate to see them. It's like toys from the 90s that if you still had them new in box, you'd be a millionaire. Mm. And it's like, you know, the Ghostbusters house and it's the old school Light Bright and it's the, you know, on and on and on and on. And like so many of those toys I had as a kid and I played the shit out of them like they, yeah. like they would not be worth any money now <laughs> uh but it would be cool to to have some of it you gotta wonder you know like if my if my mom shows up in the chat and maybe we can maybe we can ask her but like what happened to all of this stuff like i don't remember having that many garage sales although mm-hmm. i don't know i think i f- might have told you guys briefly this um before we move on my my stepdad was cutting the grass uh last summer and he f- unearths an old school Ninja Turtle. It's the Raphael in in disguise uh, outfit. Perfect paint job still. No weathering on it at all. I figure I lost that figure out near the swing set in the grass. Not kidding. At least 20 years ago now. <laughs> And it was still in like immaculate shape. He sent it in the mail to me randomly. Cool. Uh, so it makes you wonder what kind of lead paint that they painted those guys with. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Right? You put you like you have like your six scale figures now just in the sunlight for more than ten minutes, and the paint yeah. will start to fail. So you gotta you gotta wonder. But good thing I didn't lick any turtles, <laughs> guys. Let's move on for our first warm up topic before we get into the main show today. Uh, I pulled this slide up. Uh, I'm not a big basketball guy. In fact, I usually say hashtag sports anytime Marco starts talking about sports <laughs> or, you know, the other guys like Jose Plus. But DC has had a big week this week. And we got to wonder, if you had to choose your top five starting lineup here of just this slide, who would be your top five? We'll do a quick round table. For me, it would definitely be the Cavill Superman, the Reeve Superman, Batman, the Keaton, Shazam and probably Wonder Woman because they're so overpowered. What about you, Pete? Um, Keaton, Batman, Catwoman, Reeve, Superman, uh, Bale, Batman, and Joker. The Joker, the, right? uh, the, the Nicholson, yeah, the Nicholson Joker. Yeah. He was mm-hmm. pretty crazy, you know, it's very hard to predict, very hard, yeah, to predict, yeah, especially yeah. in a start a starting lineup. What about you, uh, Shane? Who would be your top five here? There's no way I'm there's no way 
I'm going anywhere without Michelle Fly for a man. Fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, just had a moment. Oh, I, 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 to just I only the need one. Here, to be honest, like, it's a dumb question, Ben. Um, <laughs> no, I'm going to ask Just completely zoned out. Um, uh, I, okay, I'm going to pick. I'm just going to stick to the movies that I like, really. I'm going to pick. Um, I'm going to pick the Keaton Batman and the fight for Catwoman. And then old Bale Batman, and then the two Jokers. Love it, love it. Good picks. I didn't expect anybody to pick Catwoman, but now that you've said it, I'm like, yeah, the fair. You only need, <laughs> You're wrong, you only man. Really need one. Let's <laughs> yeah. be honest. Classy Thomas, who would be your choice, buddy, for your warm up today? All right. Um, I will take Keaton, Pfeiffer, Nicholson. Godot and I think I'll take um uh Joker on uh, on top uh, um Heath uh, Joker Ledger yeah Ledger yeah nice nice and man. if I can have a substitution then I'll <laughs> substitute Linda Carter Oh, or Gal Gadot. <laughs> no substitutions. <laughs> Although that would, that's a good call out. I'm surprised anybody chose Heath Ledger's Joker because I know everybody's starting to get a little sick of talking about well, him. I, I, I think we're so. I think we're sick of seeing toys about him, but we you know I, I still like his acting. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well said, guys. We've got almost 30 people already watching live. Let's quickly check in with the chat here first. I do want to shout out uh, some of the new uh, Tough Nut Crew channel members. Now this slide was is updated two minutes before the show started and then we had a few more uh, but part of our tough nut crew right now we've got alvin J. we've got collecting weekly we got money mendez we got six scale mafia we got katera feezy's figures king dingling six scale collector paul schreiber the batman and the movie canon thank you so much for becoming members there guys we also have pete cass our very own pete here in the chat with the santa hat has become a member spongebob square balls classy thomas is also a member and our one six figure focus hey, Shane full house. jumped in and then yeah. lastly, but not least, of course, we've got Ryan Smith, who decided to become right. a Tough Nut crew as well. So guys, I will update that slide for everybody later on here in the chat. Just so you guys are aware, awesome. um, it's a bu uh, buck ninety nine a month if you want to join the Tough Nut crew. These are some of the member badges that you get as you progressively become a member for longer and longer. I gave us the Leonardo Ninja Turtle for the 24 <laughs> months, but... If you want some Ninja Turtle emoticons, or emojis, I guess, emoticons makes me sound old as hell, I apologize, uh, then these are some of the emojis that are now available to anybody that's a, a member as well. So if you want to smash the nut button, you can. If you're just a happy nut and you want to celebrate, you can. Jumbo, of course, I'm always giving the Jumbo. We got the angry, creepy nut that kind of looks like a vampire. I wasn't sure what Dean was doing with that, but I appreciate him anyways. And then any of the turtles below you can use right now, except for Leonardo. You have to be with us for two years in order to wow. see that guy pop up. But guys, I appreciate you guys becoming members. Let's take a look here, though, because we got lots of people in the chat, and I, of course, always want to give them the welcome. Is that everyone? I can want it more. Nuts! Assemble. For the new year, I'm going to make a new one of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just but keep that it one's so seamless. I know, <laughs> so seamless. We'll keep it fresh for everybody for sure. Um, guys, we've got the movie canon here. It says he's out Christmas shopping, but wanted to stop in and say hello and become a member. Thank you so much, good sir. We've got six Sith. Sorry, wow, I have a hard time with this one. The Sith scale collector. Uh, excited to drop my first nut, turtle nut. You'll love to see it. Uh, we've got some guy here in the chat says, what's up, my favorite peoples? We've got my friend Katera in the chat. She changed her updated picture. Look how pretty she is. We've got Akira here in the the chat thanks for joining in buddy we've got eclectic collector here hello everyone pete cass himself 
Um, says Sober Ben. Boo. <laughs> you hate to see it. Uh, we got Nikulio in the chat. Haven't seen you in a little while, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Uh, he says, have have a very Merry Christmas, Ben. Thank you for all the entertainment you've provided this year and everything else. Love you, bro. Love you too, man. Thank you so much for uh, always supporting the channel. I oh, appreciate it. Tyria, hey, all. Good to see you, buddy. I love that screen display of that Batman, by the way. That is very, very cool. Uh, we got Tremble Dust himself here in the chat. One of my favorite uh, Star Trek uh, folks out there. Uh, we've got, uh, who else here? Ryan Smith, of course, just became a channel member. Um, we've got Andre in the chat says, Visionaries, vehicle and a couple of uh, figures cool. was a fond Christmas memory. That is very cool. We got Jose G. Hernandez, or Jose Plus. He says he's out for his birthday, but have a great show, guys. Catch the replay later. Uh, happy birthday, buddy. I hope you had a really fun night with Calvin last night. I hope they didn't get you too too drunk uh, and that you're feeling well today. Uh, we've got Will Foxification himself here in the chat with us. He says, Ben Thomas is overloading StreamYard with his sex appeal. I don't know about that, but I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for stopping through the channel always. Uh, and uh, you're always welcome to jump on the panel if you'd like to. Just let me know. Send me a message. we got the Empire Strikes here. says, hey, Ben, Shane, Graham, Fuzzy, and chat. <laughs> Fuzzy. <laughs> Love to see it there. Um, I think that might be your next uh, 2024 nickname there. <laughs> Classy Thomas. We got uh, Mark Pearson himself here as well, who was named Collector of the Year by Collecting Weekly this uh, this past week. Evening, gentlemen. Uh, he says there, good to see you, buddy. Uh, we got Trevor Weed here as well. No, that nuts is just perfect. <laughs> okay, I can leave it in if you guys like it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Trevor does live long and prosper, good sir. And lastly here, we've got Nightwing Nanjin with those data picks today. Yes, we will be talking about those a little bit uh, today here as well, so stay tuned for that. Guys, let's jump into our first entertainment news topic. As we always do, we got a little entertainment news to talk first. And then we'll have quite a big segment of figure news to go over. This popped up today uh, in my in my Facebook. And Screen Rant, it's, you know, it's a reliable enough source, I think, for the most part. It at least generates some conversation. So it says here in the slide, and it's showing a picture of Sas Sasha Kaye, anybody who's watching on uh, audio or listening on audio. The new, DCU, the new DCU Supergirl casting rumor for Superman Legacy has fans furious for Sasha Kaye. Because what they're saying there is that likely they're looking at recasting for a Supergirl for the new Superman Legacy film. Now, I think she was definitely a standout portion of the Flash film. In fact, she was actually one of my favorite parts. And when the Hot Toys figure announced, you know, she was a little bit soft in terms of her sculpt at first. But then they've shown us some improvements ever since. And I ended up pre-ordering her because I thought she was really cool. But we all know that James Gunn is rebooting the DC Universe. Except, we've heard that Peacemaker will likely still stick around. Amanda Waller will likely stick around. His wife may still stick around. And a few other names uh, that could be a possibility. So do you think somebody like Sasha Kaye, who's only really had one chance to show her abilities on screen, should be continued in the new DC Universe? Or do you think that they should recast her? Pete, I want to go to you first. I thought she was okay in the film. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, it wasn't um, wasn't a great film. Keaton was the reason I went to see it, and he, he I enjoyed him. I thought she was pretty good. Um, I don't know. I just don't think there's a lot of loyalty um, at the moment. They're just happy to um, reboot, recast constantly, and... and um, that's kind of why I've got a little bit sort of jaded with it all. Um, and, you know, in previous shows we've talked about some of the other people, I'm kind of a bit like, I'm just, yeah, I'm kind of a bit tired of it. Or it might, it could turn out to be great, but, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. Is that, are they, have they given any reasons why she's she's not likely to, to resume the role? They haven't given much of a reason, to be honest. And I honestly think the biggest reason is that James Gunn keeps saying that he wants a new universe. He wants it to not be necessarily mm. recognizable to what we've already seen. But I think the challenge there is that if you're still going to keep some of the previous roles, then I don't think that's necessarily a fair way to go. Yeah. Right? And so I think that's why it has fans upset, because they're like, well, what the hell? She was awesome. Like, give her another shot. It could just be an alternate version of the, of her character mm. that we saw in The Flash. You know, they could even change her up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was just wondering whether or not it's the fact that, you know, she's great because she didn't fit that normal um, representation of what we would think of as Supergirl. Mm -hmm. And he kind of wonder whether or not he's kind of going back to something a bit more traditional 
um, in which case obviously you know it's 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 a different look um, that's what I wondered whether or not you know but yeah absolutely Tyria says oh hope that's not true uh, X-Men Supreme just jumped in says damn it I was ready and then the work exploded just all of it <laughs> I hear that, buddy. I hear that for sure. I was making work calls today right before my show. So I'm happy you could join in either way. We also have 12-inch Moose Stream jumping in. Says, hello, community of collectors. Bat Cycle is inbound, uh, which nice. is pretty cool. And then Mike Latoris with a nut uh, as well there. Good to see you guys. Mm -hmm. Shane, same question for you, but repositioned. If you envision Supergirl... Um, as Sasha Kaye, do you think that she could be given another chance if maybe her storyline was told a little differently? Or do you think that they should recast uh, this role at this point for the new Superman? I think <clears throat> I, I, I could basically cut and paste everything that Pete said. Mm -hmm. I didn't care for the movie and I liked, I went to see it because of Keaton. But <clears throat> she was a standout in the movie. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I, I think though with the James Gunn thing, if he's going to do a hard reset, do a hard reset. You can't. You've got to do like either carry on and try to fix it or do a hard reset. But it, it is very strange the way he's keeping some and dropping others. It makes me think maybe, maybe the guy who played Blue Beetle had a contract where he had to do two or three movies with DC, or maybe whoever else they're keeping have specific, specific contracts where they're still owed another movie or two or something like that. Maybe it's not as simple as why doesn't he just do a hard reset? Because, um, yeah. True. That's so I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think, um, yeah, it's unfortunate because in a, in a very mediocre movie, she was like Keaton was the best bit. I thought yeah. she was the second best bit, mm -hmm. and I thought your man Vactin was was pretty on point as well. Some very poignant moments, but uh, yeah. So I, I, yeah, if I don't, I don't understand why they're keeping some and not keeping others, basically. Um, yeah, but I, I don't, I think... I'm not too committed either way. I'm not too pushed. I think it probably could be just more of the same and it could be a mess as well. For but sure. James Gunn, mm. he's done well so far. For sure. My test sometimes on, you know, how much does the fandom know about these characters and recastings and stuff is often my mom. Because while she's dialed into some nerdum. You know, like I would say, she she doesn't watch everything daily on the news updates of casting rumors and all of the things. And when I asked, you know, her, you know, do you think Supergirl should be recast? Uh, she was like, well, I don't see why she would be. She seemed good in the previous role. And I'm like, well, for sure. But to me, I would say that if you're somebody out there that watched The Flash and didn't love it, and you see her now in the new films, you may not feel like that universe is all that much like all that divergent from what it was and it may be less inspiring to go and watch it or you might be more willing to let it hit the streamers before you you know spend any money on it for example right um and expensive Supreme says i'm with shane as much as i love the majority of the actors and their roles it should be a clean slate that being said i want peacemaker to continue so that's exactly mm -hmm. how i feel buddy that's i love yeah, i yeah. love john I, cena's I, peacemaker I, I, I get that and I, I don't know, just, you know, you don't know what to believe with rumors, but I've heard that James Gunn's Superman is going to be a bit more of um, uh, the kind of more traditional Superman, not as obviously dark as uh, the Snyderverse. And mm -hmm. if he's going for a more traditional Superman, maybe true to the comics or the values of the character or whatever, because I think people had issues when he, the Superman killed people at the end of Man of Steel. He had an impossible choice to make. I think mm -hmm. was he was, mm -hmm. yeah, sliced through a bunch of people. So um, if, if, if Gunn is going to a traditional Superman, he might be going for the blonde, blue-eyed mm -hmm. um, Supergirl with the skirt or whatever. Possibly. I wonder. <clears throat> I wonder. That's definitely more in line with, I think, the imagery he's been kind of showing us of what a Superman could look like, right? Um, hard to say. Justin Bird says, I think James Gunn is going to fail. Seems like a weird guy. He definitely <laughs> does seem like a weird guy. Uh, but I've liked the majority of James Gunn films. Uh, almost every one I think I've ever seen, including going back as far as Slither, which I watched in a hotel room about a year ago again. Hadn't seen it in years. Forgot entirely that it was a James Gunn movie until the credits rolled. But that movie is a banger. If anybody hasn't seen Slither in a while, go back and watch that over Christmas, maybe, or wait till next Halloween. But it's it's a pretty fun one, that's for sure. Uh, Ricky P says, good day, fellas. Good to see you here, buddy. Thanks for uh, making it into the chat today. We appreciate it. Siscale Collector says, wasn't it said her universe was destined to die? She's dead. So a different version would make, would, would make the most sense. 
they did. I think that's why they she, they killed her in every iteration. It was kind of like a, one of those conjunction points or whatever they called it, where it was like a hard stop. Like she's not able to continue right. past this point. Um, but again, with it being a rebooted universe, that could also mean that the rules from the past universe are wiped away. So hard so, to say sorry, what's who is really his, real. Who is his wife then? Uh, James Gunn's wife is in Peacemaker. She's the the blonde um, oh, okay. uh, cop lady. I can't remember what her character so. name was. Uh, now it's on the tip of my tongue. But Classy Thomas, any thoughts here on Sasha Kaye being recast or not recast as Supergirl before we we move on, buddy? Um, no, I think pretty much everybody has kind of stated what I what I would imagine. I I um I I don't know that I'm that committed to a character after one film but i think she did a from what i saw i mean i didn't see the whole flash movie mm -hmm. but she uh, she seemed to be a, a a really good and special part of it but then you know i was like well didn't they kill her at the end so i was like well you know if she's no longer in existence it, you know i i would imagine they probably would recast her so mm -hmm. um but i i do hope that she gets other work though i mean because clearly she's uh she's a good actor and um and would deserve so hopefully if nothing else has got her noticed and um and maybe we'll be seeing her around in other in other properties i hope we do at the same time if she never comes back i'm still really happy that hot toys decided to make her because then it'll also kind of just be that one-off figure you don't necessarily need to worry about other versions of her outfit that you then right. need to chase down either it can be a bit of a one and done which is also kind of fun when it comes to collecting, right? You get that one piece and you can move mm -hmm. on to the next thing that you really want to buy. But sticking with the topic of James Gunn, and guys, I want to hear from you guys on this as well. Sean Gunn, who we all know and love from uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, uh, as well as many other movies that in shows that he's been in, going back as far as gilmore girls even which is gilmore kind of girls. funny uh and i'm not, not a huge gilmore's girls fan but i loved seeing sean gunn in it so you know fair uh he's been cast officially now as the new maxwell lord now some of you may recognize that name because um it was actually pedro pascal who recently played uh maxwell lord in wonder woman 84 uh and i thought he did a, a pretty decent job at least for the the character i it wasn't the greatest film of all time by any stretch, but I don't think it deserved necessarily the hate that it got either. However, this is a new DC universe. The question that I have for you guys, though, is we've seen James Gunn subtly cherry-picking people that he knows and loves, clearly, right? Mark, Michael Rooker, for example, uh, has been in so many different James Gunn movies. Uh, Sean has now been in lots of James Gunn movies. His wife has been in many James Gunn movies, uh, and he's got a new DC universe. He's the head of DC now. Do you guys think that it's fair that he continues to kind of cherry pick either people he knows and loves or has worked with before? Maybe a little bit of nepotism there? Or do you think it's appropriate? Because if he's got a vision for what he thinks will be successful, should anybody really get in his way and help him determine who should be cast in the role? So first of all, Pete, what do you think of, of Sean Gunn being cast now in the DCU, uh, or DC Universe, I should say, as Maxwell Lord? And do you think it's fair that James Gunn keeps casting his family uh, in these positions? <laughs> um, so as he could do whatever the hell he wants. Once Ron Howard always had his brother in every film that he that he made. Um, yes, he did. <laughs> That's a good call. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, I, I, no, I, I mean, I think, you know, he's... Um, He's made a name for himself in Marvel, and um, <clears throat> I think, you know, he should be allowed to go and do what he wants. So I think this guy's right. He's the guy that takes over from the uh, thing, isn't he? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's he's a bit of a crazy guy in in, uh, in the Guardians films, so, um, and I don't sort of have really much experience with him in other things, but um, I, don't, I don't know who Matthew Lord is, so uh, I'll have to kind of... Uh, um, you know, I, Maxwell, my, Maxwell, Maxwell, Lord, sorry, yeah. my Maxwell. my my DC knowledge does not go mm -hmm. much past the 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 main the main stars that um you know that we've already seen in movies and stuff. So I apologise for that, but um, mm -hmm. uh, no, I think I think to be honest, with any with any director, you're you're putting the, you're putting the you know 
the, the job in their hands and you trust them to do the best the best job so um you know um let him let him do what he wants to do and uh we'll judge him um you know when the film's out and we'll see what he's done with it absolutely well said and some notable um notable comments here so Tyria says uh adam sandler uh has all his buddies in his mm-hmm. movies uh, right um sith Nolan. Scale says all the best directors work with the same actors yeah, yeah. Uh, sorsese does it christopher nolan mm-hmm. um definitely does it yeah uh even tim burton right traditionally yeah, yeah. has the absolutely. same actors over yep. and over again yeah. uh, and so it can yeah absolutely his wife <laughs> included <laughs> it, it definitely can be a mark of a good director to know who you're working with as long as the characters work right as long yeah. as you're not putting yeah. the actors before your universe as long as you're putting mm-hmm. the characters before your universe i think yeah. that's what really makes a difference what do you think shane though do you think that this casting can work uh do you think that there's anything wrong with with james casting people he knows and loves or do you think it's appropriate for for his new direction um well, uh, my point was going to be, uh, my mind went straight to Nolan. Tom Hardy regularly works with Bale, K- uh, Michael Caine, Killian Murphy, Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, he's the boss. He's the guy who's been given the, the role, so he can pretty much do what he wants. And anything he wants to put his uh, wife in, that is, that is fine by me. Um, for about four or five episodes into The Peacemaker, like everyone else who watched Peacemaker, myself and Megan, we never... Uh, skip the intro because it's gold and uh, obviously uh, James Gunn's wife is quite attractive and uh, I was looking at the intro (laughs) and she was dancing and I was like my god her arms are so toned but I didn't say it out loud (laughs) two seconds later Megan goes her arms are amazing and I went aren't they (laughs) you're my soulmate (laughs) yeah Yeah, fist pump um yeah, but uh, no, like, he can do what he wants, like because um, he's the boss. I suppose that's that's my, uh, my my thoughts on it. You gotta you gotta let him, let him. I suppose let him cook, as Tremble Dust said. And mm, uh, if yeah. it turns out well, we'll let him know. And if it turns out not well, we'll probably let him know. Mm. Um, but yeah, he, look, he's he's got a good uh, way of taking eclectic groups of characters that aren't well known to the masses like uh, Suicide Squad 2 and um, Guardians of the Galaxy I know people in chat probably might be familiar with those characters for years because they're comic book heads but for the likes of Fairweather comic book heads uh, whose collecting is rooted in movies as opposed to comics um, yeah. we shouldn't have cared about the tree or the big tattooed blue guy <laughs> or you know whoever but we ended up very much caring about the raccoon yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. oh my it's a God. gift he has. So I cried so hard in that third movie, it's embarrassing <laughs> to admit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love to see it. Totally great point there, buddy, as well, for sure. Uh, big shout out to the Empire underscore, sorry, the underscore Empire Strikes, uh, becoming a new Tough Nut uh, crew member as well. Uh, be sure to use those emojis in the chat, guys. Show all of them off. Uh, I want to highlight Dean as well. And a big thank you to him over at Collecting Weekly for helping me make some of those uh, for all you guys. Uh, so, yeah, definitely use them because I love seeing the turtles uh, pop up, the turtle nuts in the chat, <laughs> for sure. Um, Nightwing makes a good point here, too. Uh, it says, I don't think it works for all directors, though, like, say, Rob Zombie. And I think that's a good point, too. I think the pressure is so on, though. And, Classia, this would might be my question for you. With James Gunn knowing that there's, like, this massive pressure to perform, the whole world is watching now, right? If he fails, or if this movie, the Superman Legacy, flops for whatever reason, like, that's going to be, like, world-breaking news. Because everybody thinks that there's a chance that it could fail but if it's amazing everybody's going to celebrate it right it's going to be another right. end game moment or another like generation of the mcu starting again feeling for people mm-hmm. so for you classy do you think it's appropriate that tom or that um james gunn is making these casting decisions at this point uh and what do you think of the pressure he must be under to make sure that this movie performs yeah, he, uh, he probably is under a great deal of pressure. I mean, um, I mean, he he basically has a uh, has an entire universe to create and try to pull out of out of what hasn't been working for a long time and try to pull some cohesion. So for that, I can I can say that it probably makes sense that he is selecting people that 
he trusts and has confidence in. So um, clearly he, he has confidence in his brother because he's been in, I mean, he he was weasel in, um, in the, the, the uh, Suicide Squad and he was, um, you know, of course, um, the dude in the Guardians with the little wee 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 wee, wee thing, spears swinging around. So, I mean, I don't know if I see him as Maxwell Lord though, because, you know, he's a he's a bit squirrely of a guy, and Max mm -hmm. Maxwell Lord was kind of like a imposing figure. So, it will be interesting to me to see if he can pull it off. But if he pulls <laughs> it off, hey. It's uh, likely to be uh, a big feather in his cap. That's a good point. Because when I even look at this photo of Maxwell Lord, he's a pretty handsome dude. He's very buff in the comics. Uh, I don't see Sean Gunn that way. But again, if you can portray a character and give it to us as somebody that we end up ultimately loving, it doesn't really matter how it was portrayed in the comics. I would say none of the MCU films are direct rips from the comics either, right? There's always some artistic representation and interpretation of those yeah. characters. Yeah, which I think and, is some, cool. and sometimes it works and sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it worked with, with Hugh Jackman mm -hmm. and it's worked with... Um, with uh, RDJ, of course. I mean, you know, I, I think in the beginning because he... You know, he had a he had a pretty rough, rough um, time before them because of all yeah. the um, his legal issues and, and his drug addictions and things like that. But he was able to prove that he could be a um, uh, a real character to, that the public could really feel connected to. So, I mean, I, I wish success for him. I mean, I, I don't want James Gunn to fail. Um, I, I want to see DC um, pull out some powerful movies because, you know, some of the classic uh, characters are from DC. And, you know, I think we the world needs a Marvel and DC and maybe we need some independence out there also. But um, but yeah, we, we do. I think um, I hope he I hope he's able to pull it off. Definitely. Because I, I agree with you, too. Even when I think back to Henry Cavill becoming Superman in The Man of Steel, I don't know if I'd seen him in much before that point. Mm -hmm. And the first time I saw him on screen as the new Superman, I was like, that is Superman. Like, oh my god, like it blew my mind. His size and his, like his persona and the way he carried himself. And I loved that. I don't necessarily like seeing actors I recognize in superhero films yeah. either because they often have a little bit of a flair from the past, right? You kind of, you you piece them together as past characters that you've also really liked. And I think James Gunn so far from all the casting that we've seen and we've talked about on previous Let's Get Nuts shows, there's some new people, you know, the Superman, for example, in the Lois Lane. I'm not as familiar with those actors and actresses, mm -hmm. uh, but then I'm very familiar with the Lex Luthor that's been cast, right? And I'm excited for that casting also i like sean gunn so i'll be curious to see what he does um great comments in the chat guys by the way i'm having a hard time keeping up with everybody thanks so much for your comments so i'm reading them through as we as we go along uh all very well said and very respectful so i definitely appreciate that uh guys if you're watching on replay we have just over 40 people in the chat let us know what your thoughts are of sean gunn's casting here in the dcu new James Gunn universe. Do you feel like it's an exciting move? Do you feel like James Gunn maybe is casting a few too many people he loves uh, and is putting his friends and family before his universe? Or are they the right choices? Hey, I'll, I'll be his friend if he, if he puts me in a movie. I feel <laughs> exactly the same way, buddy. I feel the same way. I can't, I can't remember. I can't find out who the chat said now. Um, somebody said here, I can't remember. I can't feel it. Now, somebody said, I'd like to see Ka Sasha Kaye in blonde hair. I'm like, hmm. Maybe, <laughs> right? Like, maybe I, I could see it. So let's, guys, let's move on uh, to the next shot, topic. Now, I don't want to get too much into this man's legal case because I'm not a lawyer. I don't know all the details. All I've seen is some of the news in the last couple weeks here of some of his trial. Unfortunately, we're talking about Jonathan Majors as Kang uh, within the MCU. The question that I have now, though, is this. We've seen that, you know, over the last couple months, he had some legal fire, legal troubles, and all of us want, or should want, 
nobody to be cast out, you know, innocent until proven guilty, right? I think that that should be always the way we see whether it's people in the community, actors, actresses, celebrities, doesn't matter who you are, it should be innocent until proven guilty. However, more and more stuff from his legal case is starting to come out and not necessarily casting the best light on him as a person. But again, no actual judgment has been made yet. But my question is this. Now we've had Loki season two, right? There was a bit of a natural conclusion to the Kang storyline potentially that they could kind of go with there. You know, they can have the TVA now hunting the remaining Kangs, and they can move away from the Kang Dynasty if they want. But then a few weeks ago, we reported here on the show that a new director had been assigned to the Kang Dynasty. So it kind of looked like it was still moving forward, but that was before some of this new evidence has arisen. So the question that I have for you guys in the chat now at this point is, has the damage already been done here? Even if Jonathan Majors ends up being let off the hook, even if he ends up being reflected as innocent to his charges or to his accusations and again this is all allegedly if he's found innocent is the damage already done do you think that people's perception of him or this character has now been diminished and should the mcu move away from this character into a different bad guy or bad girl um at this point new villain i should say pete what do you think um no i complete i completely agree um you know, innocent until proven guilty. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff flying about, and there's no smoke without fire. But uh, and and I think obviously, if he's if he's if he's found, um, you know, not guilty of stuff, then then obviously, you know, if he wants to carry on, then um, you know that that should be allowed. I think if even if he is, it seems to me that perhaps not more recently but in the past people in the um entertainment industry have historically been given a, a bit of a free pass um you know after a certain amount of time i mean that has changed more recently i guess with you know the likes of um uh, uh Harvey weinstein well yeah and also um oh, i forget his name the, the guy from usual suspects um Oh, uh, um, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, yeah. So it maybe has turned a little bit, but I know that, you know, in the past, it's kind of like, yeah, well, you know, rock and roll, they're actors, they kind of, you know. Um, so I think, I think, um, yeah, if, but, but if he's, if he's not found guilty, then, um, obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't a massive fan of the, of, of the character, to be honest, but so it, it's no, it's no, makes no bones to me to be honest but i think um you know everyone should be given a, um yeah, a fair chance that'd be well said sorry i was on mute there well said i no, i think cool. that's that's kind of what resonates with me the most i i didn't totally find kang to be all that much of a mcu breaking threat no, yet no. Uh, in fact he was cast a little a little a little silly and then you know, at the end of Quantumania, hopefully this isn't a spoiler for anybody, like, Ant-Man kind of beats the shit out of him mm -hmm, by the end of mm -hmm. the film there, and that, to me, took a lot of the scariness factor away from him, and as I said, then I feel like Loki Season 2 kind of gave us a bit of an out for the character, so whether or not he's found, you know, guilty or not, again, mm -hmm. all allegedly at this point, I, I feel like even just the character within the MCU is kind of they've kind of cooked them a little bit yeah. a little too long and I think like they should they should kind of move on but Shane I'll go with you next do you feel like the perception of Jonathan Majors now with his court cases and all of the stuff there has has burned his ability for people to really get on board with his character of Kang or do you think people are more focused on the fact that the character just hasn't been all that exciting up to this point so they're just kind of done with the character as well what are your thoughts um, I don't think the character is that captivating, to be honest. Um, and just put your point on Ant-Man, Jonathan Major's character in Creed would have kicked Ant-Man's arse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just a boxer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I was uh, I heard a lot of people say like you got to go see Quantumania. Jonathan Majors is a force to be reckoned with. I went and saw. It. I just I didn't see that <clears throat> at all. Um, so I kind of agree with you and Pete in that sense that I don't think he was like a threat or I, no. like when I was watching, I'd know Thanos or, um, Infinity Ultron 
I was like, oh man, this how are they going to get out of this one? That vibe of like, especially with that Infinity Ultron, I was like, he was even more threatening than Thanos. It was like the scariest thing imaginable. I got that kind of sense of they might not get out of this one, you know? Um, but in terms of Jonathan Majors, like while I thought he was fantastic in Creed 3, and the guy is definitely, he can act and he's talented, I didn't see that in, definitely didn't see it in Victor Timely, I thought that was awful, and I didn't see it in, um, in when he was portraying Kang in Quantumania. Whether he's innocent or not, <clears throat> um, I don't know much about the case, I know there's been some sort of allegation against him, that was a court case, and I would agree, innocent and proven guilty, I have no notion what happened there. So, the same as anyone else watching this at the moment, so it's kind of like, if he's guilty and he's proven guilty, he deserves to be punished. But if he's innocent, and it was all a big allegation, then he doesn't deserve to have his career affected. However, it's the real world we live in, unfortunately, and it's Disney. And Disney don't want that heat. So unfortunately, like even if he is innocent, which I have no clue if he's innocent or not, mm -hmm. Disney might just cut ties with him. But at this stage, though, they usually kind of come out and make a statement and say we've cut all ties with mm -hmm. Jonathan Majors and yada yada like they did with that girl um, from the Mandalorian yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what was her name Cara Dune's character Cara, Cara yeah, Dune, um, her, the actress her name is now so they, they fairly cut her straight away so um, yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe, maybe they're picking and choosing I don't know where, uh, but like if, uh, if, if if he is guilty and he has done something wrong it's proven in the court of law he deserves to have consequences and be punished I mean, it was probably um, easier not, with Cara Dune, though, right? Because she wasn't necessarily a critical aspect of The Mandalorian, whereas they were starting to build the whole next movie around Kang and how all this build-up and everything like might be harder to pull shoot on that whole direction. But if he has done... Gina Carano. If, if he has yeah, done, say, yeah. and it's proven in the court of law, then there should be consequence. But if he hasn't, and it's proven in the court of law, there's not enough evidence to convict, then he should be able to go and live his life as proven innocent and put this behind him but we i'm just saying we, we don't i suppose we don't live in that kind of idealist society unfortunately and mm -hmm. yeah disney are thinking about the bottom line and their image i'd imagine you know so but look sure. but if you take all that out of it push that aside it wasn't the character that i was like oh my god this was mind-blowing you gotta see this ben i wouldn't be recommending it uh, yeah. to you wouldn't people, be so uh, disappointed if they, if they change direction no don't it's like it's like the dcu i, I don't particularly I don't particularly care Absolutely. X-Men Supreme says it's a shame that so many people were so quick to be against Jonathan Majors after the whole thing with Johnny Depp. And I mean, different different scenarios too. And again, this is allegedly, like, we don't know the whole story with John, Jonathan, unfortunately. Uh, for me, it does go back to the character in a lot of ways. Um, but SpongeBob or Classy, last but not, of course, least, uh, what do you think? Do you feel like the damage has been done here at this point? Do you feel like if he's found innocent at this point, maybe this is uh, maybe this has been overblown? Uh, is there a way back uh, for Kang as the character, uh, or just maybe Jonathan Majors in future future roles? What are your thoughts? I think that people in general <clears throat> uh, have very short memories, and sometimes they, they they linger but i think people have short memories and you know there's so many things that go on in society that people go back and forth from one crisis in someone's lives to another so what i'm thinking is that they they did they did a good job in the loki series of providing an out if they needed and i think that what they could do is that if if they were smart and this would be how i would how i would look at it is that i lay low and let it kind of stay the way it is now and if jonathan majors is cleared of the charges then just let it lay low for a while and let it kind of linger and build up in the background the way they properly should have done it and then they could actually bring it back in one of the future phases where they could say that he's been in the background, you know, causing mischief and then show ways to kind of provide little Easter eggs in future shows or movies. But, you know, kind of like, all right, for example, this is what I thought they should have done in the Marvels. And this is me 
commenting on the Marvels having not seen it yet. But, but since I didn't hear anything about this, I thought, wow, wouldn't it have been cool if they did the things like they did with Thanos, where first you start out with, because that wasn't even the, um, uh, the main actor's face in the original one. It was like a, a CG a CG face. But what they could do is that, you know, at the end of at the end of Marvels, what they could have done is that with Captain Marvel, they could have had her standing there, and in the background, you see somebody walking towards her in a green outfit, and then all of a sudden she slowly pulls off her glove, but you never see her face. And then that way, that's doing that's doing an introduction to some of the X Men characters, mm -hmm. and all the comic book heads are losing their minds about it. But do these little subtle Easter eggs that make people think, oh, what's going to happen next? Because yeah. it keeps people intrigued. The dangle, it keeps people, the hook. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, I I don't know what will happen um, with this, but I I do think that that there are ways there are ways are out of it. But I think that even if he's cleared, they're going to have to lay low for just a little while and let people forget about things for a while. And then if they want to reintroduce it later, they can. Because when, because when they introduce Doctor Doom, for example, he's not going to be a one and done villain. He's not going to be a Thanos where they're going to eradicate him or where he's going to be like a um, Ultron. That's a villain who's going to be in the MCU for a long time because he because he is so woven within so many arcs for so many different characters. So, um, hey, you know, um, that's someone who I know is going to be around for a while. If they decide to focus on him now, hey, focus on it, pull him back for a while. Then that way you can you can put him back into some other things. Let them cause some mischief. I mean, that's what makes the comic books interesting, is that you bring a villain into a, into a different book, and you let them cause mischief, and it kind of ties in with other people's storylines. So, um, yeah, I I don't think it's a I don't think it's a done deal for him yet, but I think we'll just have to see how things progress. Well said, Classy Thomas. And, you know, it, Mark Pearson made one uh, interesting comment here as well. It says, uh, problem is, even if he's innocent, people will still look at him as though he's guilty. <clears throat> and I think that is... 100%. That is shitty uh, yeah. when you think about it that way. That's why I really wanted to stress at the beginning in there. We, we really should focus on innocent until proven guilty, despite some of that mounting, uh, mounting controversy and evidence that's coming up. But guys, let's move on, uh, because we still have a ton of six-scale news to talk about. Like, so, so much. Uh, just have a quick shout. Out. As we're on the Marvel train, that um, what if season two um, premieres on the twenty second? I'm looking forward to that. I really enjoyed the first. Um, Sorry, which show? The What If uh, on what Disney if, Plus. Yes. Yeah, the the animated one. The season two yes. um, is on Friday, so I'm looking. And it looks forward like to a, there's a little bit of Christmas theme uh, yeah, going on yeah. there, maybe right? Yeah, so should be good. Hundred percent. I get my holidays on Friday as well. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me too. yeah, and they're going to introduce one one per day, which is going to be really, ah, really nice. cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about mm -hmm. it. As a matter of fact, I think the John Favreau one is going to be a specific Christmas themed one, mm -hmm. which I think will happen Ooh. on Christmas. Definitely, nice. the slow drip of Marvel content over the holidays. You'll love to see it. Yeah. Something to you know what though? To keep us going. It's it's still only going to be his his second best Christmas effort. He gave us Elf. Elf, yes. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah, Give that's very, up. very true. Yeah, very, very true. Guys, let's move on to some figure news. We have about 40 people here in the chat. Thank you so much for sticking with us and all of the great comments there, guys. You're amazing. If you haven't already, hit the like button just to help drive some traffic to the show for everybody who's not able to catch it live. Definitely appreciate it. And thanks to all the people who are slowly becoming members. I'll do my best to add it to the the, the, the member slide at the end here so I can shout you all out uh, appropriately as well. But let's talk a little bit about this uh, first. Uh, so this is Hono Studios. Hono. Uh, obviously, we've <laughs> seen the Wolverine last week. We talked a little bit about that in his blue banana hammock. Uh, and I definitely pre-ordered the shit out of that right away because it was only 160 bucks. Very accessible price point for sure. Uh, and then, of course, they teased a Magneto is on the way as well as a Thor. Now, it's too bad Eddie's not here because I know Eddie's a huge 
Thor fan, and one point he wanted me to mention for him was that he feels that one of the ways that Hono Studios is likely going to be able to keep their pricing a little bit lower is maybe some recycling of the bodies. So he wouldn't be totally surprised if the Thor had a very similar body, if not the same body, to, for example, the Wolverine that we've got coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I still think that the potential of this line is really grand, especially if we have a whole year where we're only going to get one Marvel movie, right? D Deadpool 3. Like, it's going to be a great movie, and I'm sure we're going to get a ton of toys from that, but, but it's hard to say how much other stuff could come. And with Hono looking at comic-inspired characters, we've got over 70 years of history that we can dive into with regards to characters. So really, it's very expansive. And if the mm -hmm. price point stays low, there's some pretty exciting stuff. So what I would be excited to see potentially is a Grey Hulk, a Red Hulk, and a Green Hulk. Um, but Pete, who would you like to see from Hono uh, going forward? Or are you more excited just about what they've already kind of teased us here with? Yeah, um, I thought that. I mean, I, I again, I'm, I might not, I might not be talking from a from a position of knowledge, but um, obviously, I thought they'd kind of be concentrating mainly on the X Men line, and obviously, I don't know if Thor um, fits it, like you know, if he's actually was in that animated uh, series or not. Um, I think, I think it's good. Um, it's. I, I agree with you. I think the the price is fantastic, but it's um and it's great if that's something you want to collect. I won't be jumping on it. I've I've done that in the past. I've jumped on figures because the price was good, um and you know they've not fit in with my collection and 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 my collection has 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 matured a lot over the last few years and it's very much um you know uh it kind of drives itself now. So um I won't be getting them, but I I do I do like the fact that um they're coming in at that at what's quite a nice price these days and i will be definitely be interested to see what they do with these guys how were they when they were teased did, were they in an image or something in the background because i never saw the the actual tease um so initially when the um the wolverine popped up they were in a background it was just kind of like a background piece that most people right. i think for the most part didn't actually notice all that much and yeah. then they did put a, a screenshot out there online of this particular screenshot yeah. what we're yeah. seeing here to kind of say um, yes it's it's confirmed <laughs> yeah so i mean i'm not sure who i mean you know um yeah nightcrawler cyclops some of that would be good you know the, the sort of some of the the, the uh more well-known characters but i'm sure i'm sure thomas has got a massive list because he's a huge kind of x-men um you know marvel superhero fan so absolutely is there any character sorry that you would like to see though pete um possibly a a, a night crawler or or you know and or, or probably there'll be a definitely be a cyclops i think but um just for as i say just from a just from an interest point of view because it's not something that i would will be collecting but um yeah it's mm -hmm. good to see anyway Absolutely. We got a couple good call outs here. Trevor Weed says classic hot toys uh, to veer off completely. X Men, X Men, um, and Avengers. Uh, Harley Quinn mm. uh, potentially uh, there as well. We've got uh, uh, Big Dog Pound One woo, in the chat. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, it says uh, Hono Studios. I uh, get that Harley Quinn animated show license. Yeah, I love that show, honestly. That's made me really, uh, really happy to see how naughty and near the mark that show is it makes me laugh quite a bit so uh what about you shane are you excited about seeing maybe some more comic inspired characters coming at up maybe more accessible price point still high quality is there a figure that you'd like to see made or a character i should say that you'd like to see made i gotta say man as much as my collecting is rooted in my love of film i really really like that world ring and i like the price mm -hmm. point and i like that it's kind of x-man 97 and I think this uh, collectively, if you have a bunch of these, they will look together quite together. Like if you have Cyclops, I know Beast or whatever. But um, I'd like to see how they do an animated Cable, because like you know, I I love Deadpool too. You know, I love Deadpool too. I loved uh, Josh Brolin's portrayal of Cable. The even like the effects with the, the fact the fact that he was jacked at that age. I'm always impressed by when older men can get actually that jack. Um, the design of the character. Just that time traveler with like his guns and just you know a bunch of different. Uh, he looked like he was ready for business, you know. Mm -hmm. But the cable from the comic books was a lot bigger, Jack and all that kind of stuff. Like so, I'd like to see how they do that in Hono style. 
and there was another one as well um, Gambit yeah Gambit I always yeah. thought it was a cool character I know that the Cajun car dealer they did that but these are licensed and I'd like to I'd like to see yeah. see that um, might not necessarily buy it but um, I haven't entirely ruled out that Wolverine I don't think I'm gonna do that but mm-hmm. yeah Absolutely, absolutely. Well said. I The Gambit, for sure, uh, would be one. Although we've seen a couple of uh, representations of Gambit. So, you know, I, there's just so many characters. It's ridiculous. Classy, I know you're a big uh, comic book guy. In fact, you're one of the people I really enjoy having on the show when we talk about more of those obscure characters, even like Maxwell Lord, like we were talking about earlier. Who's a character you would want to see uh, Hono uh, potentially take on, especially at the accessible price point? I think I'd like to get a... Um, a bishop, and I definitely would like to see Storm, of course. I mean, anybody who wants to make me a storm, you know, make me a storm. Uh, or otherwise, I'm going to have to resort to my own devices. Um, but I, I would also like to get a um, actually two figures, same character, but I'd like to get an angel and an archangel. The, the the get the the angel with his regular wings and then get the archangel when he was uh transformed into the purple monster with the blaze for wings by um uh by um my mind is so foggy right now what was it? Uh, apocalypse so um so yeah i mean i i'd be very very um very excited about that i'm kind of and i i think the thing that, that i like about hano is that from the Wolverine, I think one of the things that kind of keeps their prices or might help keep their prices low is that I noticed that he didn't come with an excessive amount of accessories. Mm-hmm. And if they kind of, but I, I love that stand though, that stand where you can put a comic book in the back or something like that. I think that is awesome. And if they would do, if they would make, um, make a whole line of that i i would just make it i look i just collect i just i would look i forget about hot toys and start buying hano but no probably not but but um but i i would like to uh to see more mutants and since the since the mcu is going to be kind of leaning in on their oh yeah so i like be great um you know leaning into that a little bit more i don't necessarily know that well, I was gonna say I don't know if I need too many Avengers. Um, well, and and the only reason is because <laughs> quite a few of the X Men have been Avengers, so it's kind of like you know they they kind of cross over so much. But um, I also would like to get um, Jocasta. That was the um, she was the um, not an android, but she was like the the metal robot type of type of thing um uh that was part of the avengers i'd like to see um there's a whole bunch of uh of of characters these obscure ones i want marrow i mean i i keep saying it over and over again on every place i can say i want marrow i think she's one of the most yeah marrow yeah she she was one of the morlocks and um she lived under this under in the sewers in in um in new york and Meryl had these um, had a, had a mutation that caused bony protrusions to come out of her body, and um, and it was very painful. But she would um, she could actually pull those bony protrusions out and use them for weapons. And eventually, they kind of polished her up just a little bit. But I thought Meryl was just um, was just kind of awesome. Um, Callisto would be great, also definitely Storm. More more females. I need more female heroes um, in my collection, but yeah, but I I do. Um, We're gonna just get Classy yeah. Thomas a second job, by the way, with all these characters he wants. I'm telling you, man, I I, <laughs> I love I love and I love my X Men. They they are just they're just you know when I was when I first start collecting, that was the first book the first books that I actually actively was collecting, and it was mainly because I was a big fan of John Byrne, and he was. Um, actively working on that book with um, uh, with Cl- Chris Claremont and, and Cockrum and them, but um, I I really enjoyed the fact that these mutants were different than other ones. Number one, that they had powers that came from within them, as opposed to using 
external forces but what was kind of nice is that they were persecuted for for just being who they were and it was it was kind of nice seeing the fact that they all had flaws like storm she was um claustrophobic and so if she ever found herself in a situation where she got got pinned in or or, or something like that she would she would lose it and it was just great seeing characters that you could see their development and and that, that had they had flaws they weren't perfect but they still found a way to to work through it and that's why i'm very excited about hano i hope they really go hard on the on the x-men line though yeah dude absolutely it sounds like everybody's kind of echoing very much the same thing uh x-men supreme says you know uh, Wolverine, Avengers, Wolverine, uh, Secret Defenders, Wolverine, F Fantastic Four, Wolverine, Alpha Flight, Wolverine. Really likes Wolverine. <laughs> That's what I'm getting from that. Elsa Bloodstone, uh, and so many of the ones uh, that you guys had already mentioned there as well. Uh, Nightwing, uh, 116 uh, Blink. Uh, that would be an interesting one as well. There are so many characters. The only other question I would have for you guys really quick before we move to the next topic here would be, like with this price point being that $160 range, does it make you question why we've spent so much more for our hot toys and other six scale collectibles? Even, you know, Mondo, for example, which we're going to talk about here shortly, because they gave us a whole bunch of animated series reveals yesterday. And I'm excited to get your thoughts there. But, you know, why are those figures so much more expensive than this one six scale, very realistic looking Wolverine? Does it make you feel like the wolves been pulled over our eyes a little bit, a little bit of the man behind the curtain, or do you think this is Hot Toys' response to try and kill third-party competition? Uh, quick thoughts there, Pete. What do you think? Um, well, I think people have mentioned before that obviously there aren't any um, actors' image rights involved here, and so they're probably not. Um, you know, that's going to be a big factor, and. Um, I don't know. I, 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 it's difficult. It's a it's a new line as well. I know it's in, it's it's affiliated with Hot Toys, but they need to um, you know generate some some excitement and a reason to kind of buy in. So I think um, you know it'd be nice to think that the price stays at that kind of level. Um, but at least for for a start, it's a good it's a good way of getting people um, involved and, and and buying into the product. So yeah. Absolutely. What about you, Shane? High-level thoughts. Do you feel like this erodes your confidence around pricing from Hot Toys and stuff like that in the past, or do you think that this is a make sense kind of move? No, I, 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 I keep it quick. So I agree with Pete on the lightness thing, but then the counter argument that would be there's a Stormtrooper Commander on side show for 220 or and that doesn't come in a face. So there's that. So I think this is more, I think it's not just as simple. I think the fact that it doesn't have actors like this right is definitely one contributing factor but another one i do think it's a conscious decision to tackle the low end why j and d are up there tackling the high end so yeah i think a bit of both absolutely sith scale collector says uh, an interesting comment here says i think it's too soon to question the low price of hano i have a bad feeling when we get it in hand we'll see a lower quality that reflects the pricing i mean they did put right on their slide high quality though so that's part of the reason i want to get it in hand myself because i agree with you like I hope that that's not the case and you know for me weight always determines uh price i don't know what it is it's like if it's heavy it feels like it's good quality right that's not always the case when it comes to it says scale, it, it says it says high quality they it says to, high they, quality yeah yeah right so that i mean the the market's gonna tear them apart a little bit if it's shit but at yeah. the same time it's still the like the lowest cost figure on the market including lower than third party so like yeah i don't even know what we can expect what do you think, Classy Thomas? Do you think that there is that risk of this being a feeling like a low quality once it's in hand? Uh, or do you think, again, we've just been paying a little bit more for, for stuff, plastic crack, than we yeah, should have we, been? In yeah, the past? we've been paying a lot, a lot more than we probably should have been. Yeah. But I, I think that, like I said, a lot of these um, hot toys that we have, I mean, a lot of them come just decked out with all of these. Uh, extra, you know, all the extra hands, all the extra, you know, things that are part of the whole. Fi it's not just a figure. Secondly, I'm thinking that since Hano is kind of affiliated with with Hot Toys, I wonder whether or not they might have access to borrowing bodies 
that have already been created by Hot Toys may be reducing their cost. I mean, that could possibly be a factor. And, and then I think thirdly, if they keep the accessories low, it is a way of kind of getting interest from people who would go to third parties um, for figures that are that that hot that hot toys is not currently making and i think that by having hano tackling some of these properties that collectors have been asking for knowing that the third parties are providing for them then it's kind of a way to pull back uh pull back a little bit of their market and and it may be also just the fact that maybe they can afford to take a little bit of a loss if they are in Hano just to get the extra just to get the collectors back in because if they see it if they're if they're making it like an introductory type of figure then it's likely people who maybe have not been in the collecting game for a while might say, oh, wow, this is cool. Oh, but look over here. Hot Toys has this, and it has all this extra stuff. Maybe I need to look there and buy this over here, and it looks just like the movie. So I think there could be several reasons, but you know, at the end of the day, it's all about business. I think there was a very, uh, a very strategic reason that I will probably never know why they select, why they decided to do this, but um, I don't think it's gonna hurt them. It could, stick it a little bit to the third parties but i don't know i i some of these third party figures are are so good um i don't necessarily know it's going to pull all of the business away from them well said classy it does remain to be seen if there's going to be some potential damage here now i wanted to share one quick thing and thank you for your topics there i do want to keep us moving a little bit because we still got a ton of stuff to talk about more hot toys news we got xo6 news we got jnd we got a lot to get into and 40 people still watching so since there's 40 people here let's quickly talk about this picture pete shared with hey. us here in the background of let's get nuts while we were going through that tell us about this picture here pete yeah, so um, that's me obviously on the left, and my my younger brother Mark. Uh, it, it looks like he's got an American football on his t on his on it his uh, sweatshirt. <laughs> it would have been like a real kind of just generic like <laughs> gridiron or something on there, because uh, I don't think we we even had uh, any concept of it over here. But um, yeah, so I think the the one with the <laughs> I like the other one with the big balloons. Uh, uh, yeah. Fuck knows what that was all about. There's obviously uh, some. <laughs> it looks like a big pair of nuts. Anyway, um, that's obviously definitely younger. I mean, look at my look at my brother's hair. He's got he's he's got he's like you, you were getting nuts years ago. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. I mean, I've got half my teeth missing. They're a bit like you there, Ben. So yeah. um, I'm probably about seven or eight there. So that's probably right in that you know Millennium Falcon zone. I would have thought. I mean, look at the look at the tree. I mean, you know, we must have made those decorations. And it's we that, must have made those. That horrible Lametta stuff all over it. Um, it kind of yeah. has Hopefully nobody Charlie was smoking Brown. inside at that point. It looks you know? like yeah. Charlie yeah. Brown Christmas yeah, yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah. And, I would uh, have yeah. laughed, Pete, if, if I, when I asked you at the beginning in the warm-up, uh, you know, what's a memorable Christmas gift that you received one yeah, time. Yeah, giant like, balloon. We got this huge balloon one time. It was excellent. <laughs> yeah, I got a picture of it, mate. Yeah. I, really, I really don't remember them, but we seem pretty happy about it. <laughs> Before we awesome. beat the shit out of each other with them after that oh, place was 100%, taken. 100%. <laughs> yeah, the, awesome. the, the, parents, the parents gave you a Millennium Falcon, these two balls are like, hey, look, it's Tatooine. I'm going to smash the nut button a couple times for you here, Pete, because that's, uh, that's a good share. Thank you for no sharing worries. that in the background, buddy. <laughs> Guys, we got some Exo6 news. So a quick update here. We won't go round table on this, but this is more for the Exo6 collectors. It does look like uh, Picard is shipping uh, here this week. So if you are waiting for this figure, keep your eye on Exo6 as well as some of the other distributors out there. Uh, I think this figure looks pretty good. In fact, our buddy uh, Eddie Money Mendez 
actually has purchased one of these, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. because he's going to create a Charles Xavier. He has actually reached ah, out to a so. couple places to see if he can get the wheelchair made, uh, including Zack's Wonderland over Collecting Weekly. So, you know, you might not be a huge Star Trek person, but this is a pretty good likeness, I would say, to Patrick Stewart. Yeah. So uh, you could potentially make a Magneto out of it. And then there's been a few teases that have been given to us from Exo 6 this week, Pete, and I know you're a big Star Trek guy. Ah, uh, we've got... That. Disco Bones in the back here. Yep. Now, we've seen uh, the Colin R. Spock already uh, out for people. We've seen the original motion picture. Um, Kirk already yep. gone out. People have been waiting for Disco Bones, the beard, <laughs> right? Now, they haven't really shown it to us yet. I love the mad chest hair they're giving uh, them there, that's though. That's some outfit, that's that is, isn't it? I'm, An outfit? Yeah. A hundred percent. But then... I think this was an oops by accident because Nenjin actually released these photos today as yeah, well of in the back, Commander yeah. Data. And you can see Disco Bones a little bit better in the back there. Not quite so blurred out. Yeah. Uh, as well as Data up front. Now, I've got Data on pre-order through Sideshow, which is probably a mistake because it's going to mean that I have to wait an extra 10 months longer to get it in hand. <laughs> I hope not. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm going to look like I'm 46 years old by the time <laughs> I get this Data. But i got to say, you know, this isn't an effect official announcement yet by any stretch this was a tease on a private mm -hmm. facebook so he's just kind of shown some pictures to to the collector community which mm -hmm. i appreciate i appreciate that he does that so if he's watching this thank yeah. you because you know we we're star trek fans we get excited about seeing the shit and data's my favorite character in the next generation mm. i Can gotta say though to the, the 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 previous one of, of bones for a yeah definitely. Um, Can you see i it? mean these might be really early but that belt yeah. looks odd because it looks like it's like molded plastic uh, that mm -hmm. looks really cheap uh, the buckle's fine but the actual belt is just a piece of plastic that's a bit i mean whether that's just a placeholder or something like that but it looks a little bit Maybe. rough doesn't it um it does it you know I mean, that's prototype sometimes versus yeah, and, final you know but. it was always a bold look and i think very much i get <laughs> i'd like to think or I get the impression that that was very much a style choice from uh um uh, DeForest Kelly himself, he, he seemed like he was like one of those kind of out there crazy guys in the 70s. And he was 100%. like, yeah, I've got this disco outfit. Can I just come on with this? And then we'll just <laughs> sort of, um, I originally A lot was of people get... took a lot of acid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, he kind of looks like Mr. T on the right <laughs> when you just see it from the beard. Yeah, I, I, was, I wanted to, I was going to get these three originally, but then I, I kind of thought to myself, it's just because I, I want I want the original crew, but I don't want them like this. I, I either want I want Wrath of Khan trilogy of the th these three, number one, and I would probably buy the original series as well. But I think again, he's kind of pandering to the fact that people just want these characters so desperately um, that they'll buy them wherever they come. And the Kirk was good, but I'm not a massive fan of the Spock outfit, so I didn't buy him and. Uh, it, you know, I mean, Disco Bones, it's, it's, a, it's a great look, but it's not ultimately how I'd want to um, display Bones in my collection. Well, and so many have been waiting for the, you know, the Wrath of Khan figures, right? And some of the other yeah. characters. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's still exciting to see that at least it's coming. With yeah, Data yeah. here, you see him again in the background there as well. Yeah. I feel like the Data sculpt feels a bit downgraded uh, from the first contact mm. data that I already have in my collection. Right. Now, uh, now, obviously, the actor, Brent Spiner, had gotten older from the next generation to first contact, so the character is going to look a little different no matter what. Yeah. Um, he does look a little a little soft, so I'm hoping maybe this is still kind of more in the prototype stage and mm -hmm. maybe there'll be a little more dialing in. Uh, I'm still really waiting for like any moment now for a Jordy LaForge announcement um, also a wharf like I know that those guys are coming uh, so mm -hmm. I can't wait to see them I did hear from uh, Six Scale Mafia that he's going to have some photos potentially or he's going to get a chance to do some more of the photography yeah. for some of these characters going forward so I'm also excited about that just for just for solicitation purposes you know it's a whole lot easier for me to celebrate an XO6 Star Trek release if you're not looking for a Wesley Crusher like. 
Uh, you know what? Wesley Crusher, if he comes in his gray rainbow outfit, maybe. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, Wesley can shut shut right up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, so, but no, I, I'm stoked about seeing uh, Data as well, potentially on the way mm. here. Now, it does sound like from Nengen's side there that um, Data is now the best performing pre-order that Exo 6 has ever had. Yeah. Uh, but they do sound like they have a bit of a backlog to get the card out and stuff like that before we'll start seeing kind of these so that's just shipping notifications. Indicative so. of how how desperate people are to get the start getting the uh, next generation crew isn't it it does blow me away and that's a great point pete is that like when all of us have been asking who are exo six collectors and star trek fans like why have they chosen some of these more yeah. obscure characters so far when a pre-order like data from the next generation is doing so well like you'd think you'd give us that bridge crew like first right really get money in the bank yeah and I was then, just thinking. And then move on. I was just thinking to myself, what, what's the, what's the, is there an anniversary next year? And it's the anniversary of generations, isn't it? Thirty years next year. So it'd be a nice yes. year for him to start getting some of the original crew and uh, next gen out. Hundred percent. And then because Picard's likeness is so dialed in now, I am hoping to see uh, like a red suited Picard as well. I, I need mm -hmm. Picard in, in the collection, but not necessarily as his elderly self from Picard, uh, the no. Picard show. No, I no. didn't, you know, he, he didn't feel like the domineering Picard. That, no, uh, he no, once and he's was, too old. You couldn't. So. Uh, as good as the sculpt is, it's no mm -hmm. good for um, you know any earlier iterations of him. It's, it's very much pinned to that series yeah. and yeah so trevor says coming next star trek five figures i am excited to see i don't mind um that. christopher lloyd's klingon though i mean he's i love that figure it looks pretty cool although very expensive uh and with the rooted hair that'll be yeah. the first rooted hair figure from exo so it'll mm -hmm. be also interesting to see how that actually turns out shane yeah. i know you're not a huge uh star trek guy do you have any thoughts on exo six's announcements here or or classy as well uh before we move on <laughs> no. you're good None for me. You want to speed up the show? We speed up the show. I'm yep. happy to not cool. have fake fans on the panel. Thank you for not faking your <laughs> yeah. points. I appreciate yeah. it. On um, let's get nuts. Hit the nut button if you guys are excited for data. I will be hitting this nut button all over the place privately, of course. Privately, of course, <laughs> guys. Uh, let's move on here to the next one. This popped up in the feed this week. Uh, cool. This is the Ghost SP Hunting Squad. Uh, Egon Spangler, of course, uh, or I think it's Egon Spangler, anyways. Uh, from the photos here. Mm. You know, obviously, Blitzway did Ghostbusters years ago, and they've been absolutely huge, huge chase figures. Present Toys has given <laughs> us some other ones up till now. I think this has got to be the weakest one, though, so far. Mm. Like, this feels like the most third-party, third-party figure I've seen in a while. Um, and, like, I don't have any hate on for Present Toys. I loved their Indiana Jones. I thought it's really, really good. Uh, the blade that they've shown, I think, is pretty good. Yeah. this one is weird like the serious face isn't horrible the surprised face looks very cartoony mm. and strange but people are so desperate to get ghostbusters in their six scale collection so is this is this good enough is the question pete what do you think i think the one on the left is fine it's it's, it's no it's no worse than than what Blitzway did. Um, the Blitzway, I did have, I, I, I had the Blitzway ones in hand back in the day and um, I did sell them on. They weren't perfect. Um, certainly the, the, the Winston wasn't great. Um, the Egon was probably one of the, was a, it was uh, probably the best sculpt with, followed by Ray and then, and then Venkman. Um, I think with all of these, the, um, the expressive faces have been a pretty bad and that's not something that you know we didn't you didn't get those with blitz where you just got the, the the stoic head so my view of it is is that you're not really um you're not really losing anything by not using those heads they are a bit cartoony like people have said in the chat um but i think that the one on the left is is it's good enough for display it's it's every you know if it comes out of like that is it's as good as the blitz way um and I just, for me, it's tempting as these would to kind of pick them up again. I don't have enough space to have four pretty much identical characters just with different head sculpts. And that was kind of my logic um, back in the day. And then, But then I also feel like I can't really just have one. So it's, 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 a, it's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, yeah, I, th I think the the stoic heads are good enough for them to for people. And you know, present toys getting a bit of a bashing, but the couple of figures that I've had from them, I've been very happy with them. And, and um, I think Indy was probably, one of them, right? Pretty yeah, Indy, and then um, the 
Clint Eastwood um, oh, yeah. from Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I think they're just possibly a little bit slow mm-hmm. getting their stuff out, and they're obviously constantly putting pre-orders out without necessarily getting the product out. But they come, you know, they do get it out, and I think on the whole, the quality is not bad. You know, I watch Austin Powers so many times that anytime anybody ever says on the whole, I always want to respond with <laughs> preparation H feels good. But then I don't know if it's so out of context that I should say it. So just so you guys know, that's always in my mind if anybody ever says that on any stream. Fair, fair Classy, Tom, <laughs> Classy Thomas, I'll go to you next, buddy. Obviously, Blitzaway, Chase Figures, hard to get these Ghostbusters in hand. Present Toys has given us some options here. Question for you and the chatters. Let us know, is this good enough? What do you think? Mm, I I mean it's not something that I will probably get, but um, I suppose the figure to the left probably looks the better of the two. The one on the right reminds me of something I can't put my put my finger on, but yeah, the I think the one on the left is is not a gr- perfect likeness, but it's good enough. So like if you're really into the Ghostbusters and you can't get a hold of the uh, of the other ones i mean this could be a, a good spot holder i don't know what the price is Do you know what the price is i don't i didn't get it together uh, they're, they're, it should be about 150 yeah. pounds each so yeah probably. so if it's not too expensive i mean super heavy it might be something worth you know putting in your cabinet if you're really into it but i i, I don't have any interest that's fair. Let us know, guys, what you guys think. Uh, Siskale still says he's still waiting on the battle damage Terminator. Yeah, it's odd that, because they got the non-battle damage the non-battle. Out quite a while ago, didn't yeah. they? And, and we looked at that one on your show, I think, the other day, Pete, right? Was it the was the present toys? No, that was the, that's the Tech Noir one that they've just, oh, just Tech Noir. put up for pre-order. Didn't love that one. No. Didn't love that one. No, no, that no, no, did not look, look so great, unfortunately. Yeah. And I just got the T-800 MMS-117 in my collection there last week, and I'm loving that figure, despite its 14-year-old. Uh, age gap. Now, Shane, I want to go to you with the next slide, buddy, unless you've got a real good strong take on Ghostbusters here, because I think for the most part, you are also a Back to the Future fan. And Mars Toys gave us a little tease of a Doc Brown, potentially, that we've never seen before in his more civilian style outfit. So you can go on either, either the the, or the present toys, Egon, or this. What are your thoughts on I, either I, of I'll those? Go on, I'll go on third parties in general. I find I I've always wondered what what is it? Is it just snobbery? Why don't I I have owned some in the past, but why don't I gravitate towards them? And I think it, what it is because their prices have they're starting to crawl up. The difference in price between a lot of the third parties and a, like a fully licensed they're they're getting closer and closer. And I don't think with the gap in quality, there's enough of a gap in price. Does that make sense? As in, yeah, like, yeah. There's, you're still paying quite a pretty penny for some of these third parties, and the quality doesn't seem to be there. The, the, the prank villains, they're kind of once in a blue moon kind of figures. Like, they're, they're exceptions to the rule. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of why I, I don't really rock with the um, the third party figures. Um, uh, yeah, and the Ghostbusters there. I think if I was a diehard Ghostbusters fan, I'd try to put some I, I, I'd save I'd save and work backwards for the bits way, even though they're ridiculous like, but I, mm. I put the plan in place and gradually build it up like a payment plan yeah so I've I, I gone the Ghostbusters one Back to the Future classic trilogy but I, I'm not uh, I don't collect Back to the Future that's fair I uh, have an exciting announcement so this year, as many of you guys know, my uh, life changed quite dramatically I was previously engaged at a house all the things that life came apart at the seams. I've moved on with my life. Now, at the time, I had the pre-order locked in for the DeLorean, the, the you know, DeLorean movie yep. tube, Back to the Future yep. 2. Yep. And because of the price point, because I was moving, because life was a little uncertain, I canceled it. Yesterday, two days ago, Marco sends me a quick, Marco from 166 sends me a quick screenshot mm-hmm. that... The DeLorean is now going blue screen, low stock uh, warning, blah, blah, blah. Might be your last chance to lock it in. Just thought I'd send it to you, Ben, just in case you're interested. 
Uh, and of course, my FOMO meter exploded. I immediately pulled the car over and I pre-ordered it nice. uh, and paid it off. I was going to do it on a four-month payment plan because I was like, I don't know where I'm going to display it yet. So maybe I'll give myself four months to figure out a display option. And then I was like, nah, screw it. I kind of want it before Christmas. So I paid it off. And so it's coming tomorrow to the collection, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, so maybe I'll do like a live unboxing That's or something. Cool. My friend, my friend Katera, who is also a huge back to the future fan she may come over and help me actually unbox it uh and she's a professional photographer as well so she's going to help me take some pictures so mm. stay am, tuned potentially for that i am tempted because I, I had it on pre-order as well and then when all of the issues and stuff um came out then i, I did cancel it and i had the original one and it was great and yeah. obviously now i've got the dock to go with um marty um mm -hmm. it would be cool i mean i don't know i, I don't know where i'd put it but um I have looked at it and, and I have seen that, um, you know, Toys by an Agent had it at a decent price. I don't know, obviously, how much the shipping would be and obviously if you did get done with customs. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a nice looking piece. Now they've fixed the um, issues with the wheels. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly think that uh, customs is going to hit me pretty hard, to be honest. But <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Um, but I do see that it's now waitlisted uh, on Sideshow. But that's so. horrible. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of the the face on this dog. It's you know like it's a Christopher Lloyd expression, I will say, but it's not the one that I'd want to necessarily keep in the collection. It looks like he's in the middle, like middle of a heart attack a little yeah. bit. Yeah, very like yeah, it's... slow upset, right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but this good. is just a tease. You know, Mars Toys does traditionally give us multiple head sculpts, so maybe mm -hmm. this is just kind of that tease. It, it's a weird tease of this like character being in like the guy looks like just... he's sitting in his car or something. Yeah, like, it's just not a... crop shops. It's not weird. really an outfit that I'd have any um, you know there might be people that want every every iteration and every outfit but um it's not iconic enough for me even if it was amazing um you know so absolutely uh expensive cream says okay this venue doesn't want me to participate everything kind of what hell right now around showtime mm -hmm. and it's kicking up again i'll catch the replay buddy thank you for joining either way i hope work uh on a sunday gets better for you depending on your time of uh, where you are in the world we appreciate you being here buddy either way for it sure. kind of looks like a um, like an extra to the Music Man or something. It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, Shiny Shiny says, I'm still thinking about the Hot Toys Back to the Future 3 Doc Brown. Mm. Um, and I saw that that's low stock right now as well, at least on Sideshow as of today. So if that's something you're interested in, not to try and drive FOMO, but something to consider. But let's stick with the third-party route for one more before we get into some more licensed options. Because 3.0, which uh, has been hailed pretty strongly this year as a, is a great up-and-coming company. They've given us lots of amazing Transformer stuff. Uh, you know, Henry Cavill as The Witcher is great. I love his voice as Geralt of Rivia. He actually did voice coaching to sound just like the character from the video game. And it's amazing. When there was, you know, the talk of him being recast uh, for one of the Hemsworth brothers, my first thought was not what the character will look like, is how will he sound? Because I thought, you know, I thought he did so good with that. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed with the likeness mm -hmm. of this. It seems really soft, um, which is disappointing because I love The Witcher and I don't have one in my collection yet. So for me, this is, at least at this point, if not a bargain bin contender, like if it hits bargain bin, maybe I'd consider it. Uh, or otherwise, it's probably a pass for me. But Shane, what do you think of The Witcher here, uh, the likeness, and is it something you would consider for your collection? Uh, no, I only watched the first uh, season and I thought it was all right. Sorry to but interrupt you there. The game. Uh, fact checker Jose mm -hmm. G. Hernandez did correct me here. Thank you, Jose. He says, coming in to say third party, three zero is not third party. Yes, sorry, that is true. Yep. You're absolutely right. I, you always have the fact I was trying to tell him on the I thought he was out for his Monday birthday. Run. I thought I could I thought I could yeah. say lies and nobody would even notice, but no, no. I, I was trying to tell listening. him on the first day, certainly. <laughs> certainly on the Hope Show, kind of going, oh, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy, Jose. <laughs> first day. Yeah. But I know no, no, he's right, though, because I, I was actually going to I was going to correct you on as well. I was like, ah, oh, don't be that guy. But, oh, Jose's here. So. <laughs> that's a um, sorry to interrupt you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, no, you're all right. I think I interrupted you. Um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow, um, Jose. So, yeah, look, I, I watched the first season and I thought it was all right. But I haven't played the game. So maybe I think if you have played the game and you love the game, then the, a, a series gets made in TV, you're naturally more invested. But then again, I watched The Last of Us and never played the game and thought it was great. Um, so yeah, I, I think actually the picture you have up here, I, I can see Henry Cavill there. 
I, like I can. It's soft, but I, I can still see it. So yeah, it's pretty much all I have to add. Man. It's like the sculpt isn't bad. It's just the paint work isn't so great. Hey, it's it's interesting. Mm. Um, JC in the in the chat says, "Great show, thumbs up." What TV C- TV series characters would you guys buy day one? I mean, there's so many, but I would say for me, my very first thought was uh, Daenerys Targaryen from anywhere between season one and season seven. Uh, the season eight, don't love it, so I wouldn't buy that one in art. Get the message. We'll see. Uh, that would be my answer uh, for that. But uh, SpongeBob, any thoughts on The Witcher here from uh, 3.0 before we hit up the Mondo animated series uh, teases mm-hmm. from yesterday? I don't really have any comment. I've got no comment. You love to see yeah. it. I love to see it. He's too he's too medicated. He's like, these all look great. <laughs> so let's move on to this, guys, because Mondo showed us some teases. Now, I apologize for the kind of shysty pictures. These were the photos that were being shared around the interwebs yesterday. Uh, I don't have very good quality pictures, but you, you, you can't have a Let's Get Nuts show if you don't talk about at least a cool animated Venom, because for me... I love the old animated Spider-Man show. It's one of the my, like one of my favorite shows as a kid, like kind of all time. And I loved this interpretation of Venom. Uh, this was something that I had kind of hoped we would see more of a Venom version from even the Spider-Man game more recently. But it was close, not quite the same. I really liked the blue flares and everything. They had kind of that cell shading that these Mondo guys can give. And the Eddie Brockhead sculpts, as well as some of the other tongue pieces and everything that this guy comes with, are amazing. But I want to show you guys all four slides and then we can decide which ones we're interested in chatting about most so again this is the symbiote spider-man suit that's shown we also had the spider-man himself with a goblin head uh we know that uh zach over at collecting weekly really likes goblin uh and (laughs) uh we've got the bane here as well which has a whole detachable body with seamless arms and bulging muscles which cool. is crazy crazy uh, as well as cyclops and I mean, we've seen a bunch of cyclopses lately but obviously this is certainly a contender so shane i want to go to you first of the couple slides here are there any big standout pieces for you what are you most excited about here i i think actually i saw these earlier on i think there was a a rogue as well i think there was a rogue there as well, is but, a um, rogue so i've got that slide yeah. here for you as well so this is the rogue as well as tila um, from and I thought she was pretty cool. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, thought she was pretty yeah. cool. But the, um, out of the ones you showed there, uh, I, I just noticed that the Bane with the, you know, he's obviously taking the Venom and he's, I think that's a cool swap out and inclusion, to be fair. Like, you know, you have like, because <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty jacked as it is, like, and then you have like, you know, him juiced up. I think that's a pretty good uh, inclusion. It's funny on the right though, it looks like his posture is fantastic for ballet or something like that. It looks like he's yeah. about to go into a Swan <laughs> Lake or something like, but uh yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any interest in picking them up, but I do think it's cool to have a swap out bloody tour. So like, for sure. Well, and like, keep in mind too, right? We just saw the Hot Toys comic inspired Spider Man there, uh, the the limited two thousand piece version, uh, you know, a week or two ago. Um, and Mondo's given us this one as well, which will obviously have you know maximum dynamic posability in comparison to a fully suited Spider Man from Hot Toys, but. You know, these figures traditionally do come with joints as well. And, you know, as much as I like joints in real life because I live in Canada, I don't always love joints on figures. And it, they drive me a little nuts. To me, though, Mondo has a place in my collection. I've got the Batman, the animated series Batman and Joker on the way because I love that show. And I love the animated uh, universe here. I really am excited about the Venom, the symbiote Spider Man, and that Bane. And if more comes from Batman, I'll be really excited to see that as well. Pete, what about you here, buddy? Are you know, of all the Mondo teases here, what are standing out to you to be kind of the most exciting so far? Um again, it's it's, it's not really uh, what I take. So I like I think the Spider-Man will be cool. Um I do I do like a Spider-Man and uh you know, they come with a lot of stuff. I know, I know you said that the prices are creeping up a bit. Um but at least you get lots of options, certainly lots of head sculpts or or, or masks and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the and the the Cyclops suit is quite good. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm very much my, my collection is about photorealistic and and fabric costumes and that sort of thing. So um, these are great, and and I think their their Masters of the Universe stuff's great as well. That that Taylor looks really good. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's just um. I think they look good, but it's not something that I would uh, 
be looking to to add to my collection that's fair no that's fair not for everybody for sure mm -hmm, still mm -hmm. very cool to see them though and, and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, such folks. a good time to be a one six scale collector absolutely it's like so much cool shit. yeah 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 <laughs> shiny shiny says did you see the third party batman animated one with a suit i think that looked really cool we actually mm. talked about that on last week's show buddy so if you missed that show uh we definitely had a segment in there yeah. about that mm -hmm. version uh because there'd been this the superman a couple weeks before uh, yeah. as well which was really yeah. cool now classy thomas I know you really like X-Men, so I would imagine that the Cyclops and that Rogue are standing out to you. But are there any others here, buddy, that you would be interested in bringing into your collection from these teases? Um, not really. I mean, they're all nice. Um, I think I don't. I'm not familiar. With T Tila is that it? That's uh, He-Man. Yeah. Oh, that's He-Man. Yeah, I'm not yeah, that yeah. familiar with her, but I think that she's probably the most interesting. Mm -hmm looking one uh, out out of the whole batch of them but they're all they all look kind of nice and um but i i don't really collect a lot of mondo so i, I don't really have a, a comment one way or the other fair enough no that's fair trimble that says i made you things to that deal keep her away from me my god hit the nut button for tremble dust yeah. really quickly everybody okay we got elliot uh, mcreynolds here in the chat with the jambo thanks for that buddy uh if you remember send him the jambo uh button as well for me okay guys uh it's hard for me to send it while i'm in this stream yard channel you hate to see it uh, I think for me, I was really excited to see the Rogue. I know we got that Anna Marie uh, last year from So So Toys, or part, maybe it was this year, I guess now. My, my years are blending together. And I thought she was really good, but this, to me, is really that comic-inspired uh, version of, of Rogue, and she looks pretty damn good, I gotta say. So, I don't know. Uh, oh man, Tila Tequila, that brings me back. Holy God, I was at the Average Joe, I think, show from, from when she was on it. I think that's what it was. But anyways, yeah, that, that sorry, that just brought me right back. <laughs> I hate to see it, Tila Tequila. Uh, guys, let us know in the chat, who are you most excited to get here? Uh, are you going to start maybe a Mondo collection if you haven't started one already? And... If you're looking at Hot Toys comic-inspired versions, Hano comic-inspired versions, Mondo-inspired versions, like at this point, how do you choose? What is the deciding factor? Is it the joints or the lack of joints? Is it the accessories? Is it the price points? There's lots of questions, but I think collectors are going to have a lot of selection, so I'd be interested here what you guys think but guys with that down let's take a look at hot toys because hot toys gave us the reva uh this week and some people are saying that there is some downgrade from the prototype so i wanted to share these photos here as well because for me initially i thought there might be some downgrade in the skull maybe but then i saw some of the photos that they were giving us and while some of the photos were done by different bloggers than others i thought some of the photos standout quality was also better so for example here on the photo on the left she kind of looks a little shiny a little more plasticky clearly there's a little bit more of an aggressive light on her so too she looks a little soft but then by a different photographer on the right hand side to me that looks exactly like the actress in costume like that doesn't look like a figure at all in fact i had to make sure that it was the figure before i put the slide picture up and i gotta say i'm pretty impressed now i didn't absolutely love her character in the show but mostly because of what happened at the end of the show as she was kind of going after the kids and stuff like to me that felt a little out of character and a little forced which i didn't like the writing but it had nothing to do with the actress herself i thought she did the best she could for the material she was given so price point wise the figure's not so bad i think it looks pretty good i think it turned out pretty well however hot toys is also notorious for not necessarily giving us full lines so shane i'll go with you first if we don't get the full line say we only have the grand inquisitor now hopefully that darth vader's around the corner any day now like i was hoping for it before christmas but that's seeming like we're running out of time there but there's also some other inquisitors that we haven't quite got yet is this a figure you'd consider putting in your collection what are your thoughts no um whether they give us all the brothers and sisters and vader and i know they're giving us vader to have grand inquisitor this one's out now and they tease um all the other ones even if they give us the full line i i, I have no interest in picking this up the only thing i really have an interest in picking up from that show is that battle damage vader because it looks, looks absolutely stunning but um no i didn't like the character didn't like the right show there was parts of the show which I thought were awesome. Um, but it was just too hit and miss from, from episode to episode. 
uh, wasn't a cohesive story. And you're right, uh, there was no reason for her to go after Luke in the end. It, just, it didn't make sense. Yeah, um, but like the figure, I really, really, I thought the head sculpt was mind blowing. But I do think there has been a downgrade. I, t- I definitely, I took your point about um, these comparison photos on uh, Bargain Bros on Friday. They're definitely like. The one on the right looks very, very re- realistic, like a person. The one on the left, mm-hmm. then, you know, it looks a bit plasticky because of the harsh light in it. But um, I still still think there has been a slight downgrade from the prototype, but the prototype that it, it, it looked like a photo, you know. So, um, yeah. But like again, if I think if you're looking forward to this figure, I say people would be happy. It's just it's just not one I've been interested in, to be honest. I've even heard some people say, and I'd quote them if I could, I I don't remember who it was, but I've heard some other uh, YouTubers in the community say that they could even use this body as a way to make some of the other Inquisitors as well, because the outfit itself is really badass. So another reason to pick up maybe, you know, two of these, for example, you know, create your own uh, third sister or seventh sister or however many sisters there are. It'd be kind of cool. I'm not as familiar, so don't hate me in the chat, guys. Uh, Classy Thomas, I don't know if I've heard your take on Reva as a character yet. Uh, or the show, but also the figure. What are your thoughts here, buddy? I I don't really know that much about her. I, I don't really do a lot of following of Star Trek. Uh, I mean, uh, Star Wars. And oh my God! You just about lit the chat on fire. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but yeah, but um, she's very she's very pretty. And um, if if I was just randomly looking for uh, a figure of color, I I would probably you know go to her because she's uh she she looks great but um i don't really have any interest in it because um like i said i'm just not a i i just don't really follow that franchise so to see it hate to see it yeah star trek yeah yeah you almost let the, the whole thing on fire buddy we, we got to cancel it <laughs> pete pete's the 18th uh brother here so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've sifted up for the uh for the star wars segment. do it do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Love it, Pete. What are your thoughts on Reva here, buddy? Is that another character, the show, or or the figure itself? Is it something you uh, got juices flowing? What do you think? No, not at all. No, the, um, the 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 figure's okay. The figure's good, I think, for what it is. Um, but no real love for the um, the character or the the representation in in the. I know a lot of people love these these guys from the you know rebels or clone wars or what have you but i don't have that that connection and um yeah a bit lackluster for me so um yeah not not something that i'll be looking for absolutely you know it's they did a good job here not showing darth vader because I think that mm-hmm. would have been like everybody would have been like, oh my god, Darth Vader's coming too, right? Because yeah. time wise, he should be any day, any day, and he's yep. one of my pre-orders. I want. Yeah, him. I think we've all got him. Well, apart from Thomas, probably. Right. But um, yeah, yeah. But uh, but no, no, they haven't shown him in any of these photos yet. So I'm sure that's on purpose at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, but yeah, let us know, guys. I also, if any of you in the chat watching, once you get this figure in hand, if you take a couple banger pictures, I'm always willing to accept them. You can always send them to my Ben Thomas Show Instagram. Uh, if you got a good picture, I will definitely highlight it. In fact, I'm going to show a picture of a Venom character uh, from Nick underscore Collectibles here at the end of the show today because he took some banger photos and I wanted to highlight those uh, for him as well. But guys, let's move on to this uh, quickly. Now, you know, for the most part, all of us here have talked to uh, death, uh, you know, to death about this figure up to a certain extent. But I kind of want to have just more some higher level thoughts because I've seen a lot of people saying that the, you know, kind of the 300 plus price point for this guy feels very reasonable. He comes with a really cool uh, diorama display base. He comes with the Ben Affleck face. He comes with the different hair sculpts. There's a lot of good here as well as a body upgrade. But I'm not necessarily an expert when it comes to the Batman versus Superman outfit. And so I saw some of the negative criticism floating around the interwebs as well about how this isn't quite the right color. Uh, The stubble isn't quite there. doesn't really match. And there's some other criticisms around the abs being so defined. Um, And people still really love their first version too. And I think that's sometimes where some of that criticism can come from. Nobody likes to see a 2.0 if you already have the 1.0 in the collection. I felt that way about Bane. I love my 1.0 Bane from the Dark Knight uh, Rises. And I felt salty when they upgraded him, even though it's still really freaking cool and I kind of want it. But Pete, what are your thoughts here on the upgrade 
to the Batman here, uh, the <clears throat> BVS Batman, I should say. You know, is this a win for collectors, would you say, at this point? Do you feel like it's been long enough as well since we got that first It doesn't version? seem like a long time. And then when you look, there's like nearly 400 um, MMS numbers later. So it's obviously a, right? a lot older than... Uh, I did have the original one um, back in the day, probably... Um, yeah, probably four or five years ago when it, when it was first out. And um, it was a decent figure. I... Um, I didn't kind of go down all the mods. I know that, that Ian um, repainted a few because they, you know, they're very... The original one's almost black and, and, the, and the suit should be a lighter grey and stuff like that. But um, I thought it was a decent figure. Um, so it might be a weird thing to say, but I think from, like, the belt upwards, it was really good. But I always felt like the legs looked a bit odd. Um, it's difficult to get them in a good pose and to, and to look realistic. So... Um, you know, ultimately, I, I move that figure on. I, I don't really feel the need for the for, for the upgrade, and, I, and I'm not a massive fan of kind of. Um, I, I don't mind the fact that the um, the the shoulders are a bit broader, um, but I talked on OFAC saying that I I don't like the abs section and stuff like that. I feel like it's um, it's too cartoony looking. Um, either if it's meant to be um, in the suit. Or if it's meant to be his actual abs coming through that suit, um, it, it just doesn't look good to me. Um, so yeah, um, it's interesting. It's interesting you mentioned that too, Pete. Just to, mm -hmm. just to tag onto that because I so I rewatched this movie last night because it, yeah. it had been a while since I'd seen it. Uh, and I will say the Ben Affleck parts with the Batman are actually some of my favorite parts of the film. He yeah. is pretty badass. Mm -hmm. And like mm -hmm. some of his brawling scenes are really, really Absolutely, cool. There, it, yeah. there is a scene where he stands uh, uh, kind of on top of his Batmobile uh, or his Justice Mobile, I, I guess you can call it. And uh, yeah. he does look a lot more kind of jacked like we're mm -hmm. seeing here with this yeah. left version. But then okay. in some of the other fight scenes where he has to be a little bit more mobile, I noticed that it, the suit changes now clearly that mm, is probably right. on purpose for the sake of actually being able to perform stunts in the yeah. suit um but i almost say like a little bit of both are kind of accurate based yeah. on what i saw from the film which is interesting i was just surprised how big he looked in the one scene where he's standing on top yeah. of his justice mm -hmm. league mobile. oh he was definitely big yeah um, for sure but yeah and they've both looked like they've made some subtle changes to the to the belt if you're that much of a stickler for for accuracy but um mm -hmm. i uh yeah i mean it's it's it was a surprising one for me, but again, you know, like I think you said, Ben, that that maybe they're looking to cash in on the um, on the in art um, Superman pre order. Yeah, definitely. I do think that they're probably trying to get ahead of it at the very yeah. least, right? We've yeah. seen the BVS Superman coming from in art, uh, which a lot of people like. That's got a lot of people's wallets, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be totally surprised uh, if Inart gives it to us. Having said that, I mean, right now, we're, and we're going to talk about the Batman next from the Pattinson verse. Yeah. But I mean, like, I think people want to get these in their collections now, mm -hmm. right? So if yeah, Hot yeah. Toys are the first over the plate, it gives us an opportunity to have this character stand in. And if Inart does it better down the line or the same, then yeah, you can make the choice to, to switch and sell yeah. if you want to. Mm -hmm. The sale market right now kind of sucks for one six scale. So Shane, I would ask you the same thing, you know, like for this, if we have kind of that inkling that in our might make a BVS Batman down the line, is this something that people should pull the trigger on now? Is it something that they should wait for to see what kind of comes next? Like what's the best advice for either new collectors or even seasoned collectors at this point? I hate the way you always trap me into giving advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you get pretty good advice, ben to be honest. But, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just need to know, okay? I need you to tell it's, me. <laughs> it's a dangerous game. It is. I like, with, with this, is if you have in our figures in hand, or you've you know watched like all the videos under the sun, because I do think like. I know the people say, you know, oh, you don't really know until you have it in hand. But like, if you sit and look at every single photo and every single review on, the, you know, the, the Pennywise, the Ganda, the Joker, you should at this stage have a fairly good idea about the quality that they're delivering. Yeah. And uh, if you are a patient collector who's willing to wait and go, look, I'm, I'm only going to pull the trigger once. I don't want to have multiple. Uh, BVS uh, Batman's in my collection, or if you've already ordered the BVS in our Superman, it would probably make more sense to wait for the in art. I know that's a meme now, 
But like if you if like yeah. if you have ordered the PPS Superman, it would make sense that you, you'd hold up because they have said they're going to do uh, the other two as well. That being said, they're very very slow. So if you're not a patient collector, maybe you're like, oh, life's too short. This will do. Um, but then if you get this, and it'll more than likely come out before the inert. And then at some point in time, they drop their BBS soups and then you pose them together. Will they scale correctly? They should. They're about one six scale. It not necessarily guarantee, but will they actually look the part together or will there be a quality difference? Mm -hmm. Because I do good think question. as good as that, the Batman that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. um, is in everyone's hype at the moment because it's, it's literally figure of the week. You know, it's that kind of mm -hmm. FOMO. I still think Inart are going to beat them on that in terms of like the the real like the the photo realism as as, as Pete would say, um, or the shrink ray as collecting we would say. Mm -hmm. I, I I do think that in terms of realism, they're probably going to beat them on that. Um, so it comes down to two things really. Uh, if you if you're patient, or if you're not patient, or if you want the the, the better version because it. I think I know it's so far like in, in our they're doing a pretty good job like so yeah I can't answer the question really awesome. I just, nope I that, you know what I actually think that still posed yeah, some yeah. great uh, you know mm -hmm. let's call it advice without without actually advising right because mm -hmm. it, it is hard I mean we, we all we're all up here on let's call it virtual stage sometimes talking about this stuff we don't mm -hmm. want people to feel like we're telling them what to buy or when to mm -hmm. buy or why you should buy uh, it's not like that it but there is so much selection it's so easy to spend money nowadays mm -hmm. that you then regretfully spend right you can you know i can mm -hmm. pull the like for example the wolverine that from hano toys recently i was saying uh last mm -hmm. week to pete man i i literally almost bought the sideshow one uh mm -hmm. like a, the week yeah. before hano announced their wolverine because mm -hmm. i still really wanted a yellow and blue suited Wolverine and I know that that figure came with issues I knew that the, the claws would fall out and I'd probably have to glue them in I like I knew that there were challenges but at the time I was like you know for 240 bucks that's not bad at least I can get the figure in my collection and if I'd listen to somebody out there say even one time that they really liked it and that I should consider it I might have bought it and then the week later I would have felt super freaking burned when that mm. new Hano figure goes up for 160 bucks, so $80 cheaper, I would have been really upset. And so that's why we try not to give advice here, but more so talk at a high level, right? Like, how will this fit into the collection? How will it look? If you choose this one and not a potential future in art, will you still be happy with it down the line? We've been talking a lot about that with J&D, uh, the Joker this yeah. week, right? We're just the same nice. conversation, right? And we'll talk about that here for, uh, in a few minutes as well about that Joker and the prices and stuff. Like, at what point does it become more collection addiction than it does collection or collecting because you love the characters? I There's a there's a hard line even for me there, and I discussed my collecting addiction this week uh, with, with my friends, and, and I'll share that with you guys here in the chat uh, shortly. So, But before we move on to ben, the next... Yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, Ben, just before you move on there, one bit of advice I would give people, this is legitimate mm -hmm. advice, that if you are a big BVS fan, but yet you're not the... Some people will get both. Some people get this, some people get the inner. But let's say you're going, you just want one... Your, your definitive BBS. Think about this. This is going to be released. This is announced now. It we, we won't see this for eighteen months. In the next eighteen months, that's true. There's a strong possibility that Inart would at least put up their prototype images for the BBS that they said they're going to do. So you know, maybe wait and see those prototype images. Uh, in the meantime, fine, I might go wait list and sideshow, but you can get it other places and it, it. they're not all sketchy Hong Kong places, like, you know, to be honest. Sure. No, nope. well said, buddy. Absolutely well said. Classy, I'll go with you last here, buddy. Uh, you know, obviously this figure looks pretty good. The price point, people are feeling like is a good price point in that 300 uh, $340 range, I believe it was. Um, there's a lot to love here. They've also given us an articulating head sculpt, which I think is strange because traditionally this guy really couldn't turn his head in the film, especially <laughs> in the movie when I watched it last night. Like, he really can't turn his head. So, to me, that's not even really a... Like, that's not an accuracy. That's more for, like, that's more for figure delivery. That's more for dynamic posability. It's an interesting uh, addition for this, this six-scale figure. What are your thoughts uh, on the character, how he looks, the likeness to Ben? Any high-level thoughts there, buddy? 
I think he has a, a I think they did a good job on the head sculpt and um, the body is is really beefy so like if you're looking for a beefy Batman you know I, I think some people are more they want it to look you know as close to the movie as possible and so this may not be for them or their recollection but if you're just looking for a, a nice looking Batman I mean it's not, it's very nice looking I'm not a big uh, uh, Ben Affleck uh, fan as far as Batman he's not my favorite Batman but in the suit uh, looks looks very good uh, so like if, if he were in a, a nice uh, if it was at a good price, um, like maybe bargain basement or something like that, then, uh, or if, or if I call him on a good sale, I might consider getting it. It actually looks really nice. Mm -hmm. I don't have the suit, but I've got the nightmare one that came with the nightmare two pack, which I, um, and I love that figure. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I've been on record on live other live streams saying lately, like, I kind of hated this guy at first. I, I had a big hate on for it. And not because I don't like Ben Affleck. I was happy for him to be in the role. I thought he would do good. Uh, it was more about his morality in, in the film. I you know I liked Christian Bale's rules that, you know, no killing, no guns. I, I liked that. I know some people hated that, but I, I thought that was kind of fun. Um, gave a workaround around Batman a little bit. This guy was like pulling out guns and blowing people away and all that. It was just <laughs> like, didn't feel very Batman-y to me. Like, I don't, like, ah. So I, like for me, when I first saw it, it, it put a bad taste in my mouth. Years later, I'm rewatching it again. I would say that I'm a little bit more happy about it. Uh, somebody here saying uh, in the chat, uh, Shiny Shiny says he looks depressed without the cowl and so uh, <laughs> so pleased he's wearing it. He kind of looks depressed in these other photos too. You hate to see it. You don't notice though how much more his facial hair is is grown in. And yeah. they removed his mole a little bit, which I mean is very iconic uh, Ben. They also kind of took his butt chin away a little bit. Like I feel like they need to give him his butt chin back. What the hell? Yeah. Like, it looks like he's had filler done, uh, but that's very Bring iconic to Ben. Yeah, right. You should be able to blow your fucking uh, blow your nose in there. Sorry he's for the swearing. It, he's got it on the <laughs> on the right side. I wasn't gonna, sure you were gonna, gonna see a little bit of one. <laughs> <laughs> And blow your nose on his chin. You hate to see it. Okay, on to the next one here, guys, because we've still got two more topics I want to roll through uh, before the end of the show. We're at the two-hour mark, and we got about 45 people watching live. Thank you so much. I love uh, seeing all of you here, including uh, the members who have signed up for the Tough Nut crew. Thanks for sending me your badges. Show them off, the Ninja Turtle Nuts uh, and the Jumbo Nuts and all of the fun stuff. This popped up. This was the figure of the week, like Shane uh, you know, eloquently mentioned, uh, because... It poses that question, right? You know, you guys have seen my screenshots probably if you're a, if you're a subscriber of my channel. I do the this or that show, right? And people make fun of me because apparently my hands look really big <laughs> when I say this or that in the screen. You've got grab. Hot Toys hands, mate. Apparently, it's very big hands. Okay, I'm a big guy. What can I say? But I had to ask the question to myself: this or that earlier last year when the pre-order for both the Hot Toys version and the in-art version went up. Because they both looked really good. And they both came with lots of different cool stuff, like cool stuff, right? And the money was around similar pricing for the most part. So it kind of came down to likeness to the actor. It came down to whether I wanted rooted hair or not rooted hair. Whether I was an in art fanboy or a Hot Toys fanboy was part of the discussion of people. Um, I don't think it should matter what company you put in your display as long as you think it's cool and it fits your collection. I, I don't think it matters what company it comes from. But hot toys was the first over the finish line and we've got a chance to see this week some great unboxings shout out to mrc collectibles i watched his unboxing last night uh so i could take a better look at the the bat signal that the, the one version of the character comes with this guy notoriously has quite a few skews or skus as marco at 166 would say uh which can make ordering a little bit confusing uh i would say that my feedback to hot toys would be please keep it to less skews going forward. I think that that's easier to navigate. But the photos from everybody so far look amazing. Now I've also seen people already modding this, this figure, like fully doing like full repaints of it and everything. So like that to me is a little crazy for something that's so new. But for me, I did decide to go with, I think it was the premium option, I want to say, or the platinum, premium or platinum version of InArt uh, that comes with the sculpted hair, not the rooted hair. Uh, for the most part, because I don't really intend to ever display him with the Pattinson head, I think for the most part I'll keep the cowl on him. That's how I liked him in the film. The Bruce Wayne parts of the movie were actually my least favorite parts of that film. 
I liked him in the bat suit. I thought that that looked the coolest. But I would also say, for my own take on it, is that you know while the bike came out from Hot Toys also earlier uh, in the week or earlier in, yeah within the last two weeks, and that's looking pretty spicy in people's collections. I also think that the the bat signal is more of a character from the film than the bike was. You they revisit that bat signal about four or five different times in the movie. And the bat bike is really only kind of at the tail end of the film. So for me, it would be the inart Batman with the with the potentially hot toys or inart bat signal. I think that would be the display that I would be chasing. Uh, and I'm really excited to see what inart does, like Shane said earlier. I still think that they may take the win for likeness and accuracy, but both look really, really, really good. So Pete, help me figure out whether I made the right choice there. Like now that you've seen this release, <laughs> no. what are your what are your thoughts? No, I'm not doing that. Shane <laughs> Shane said that. No, 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 no. I'll give you my I'll give you my opinions, but of they course, are my opinions. Course. And um, I think this looks really good um, to the point where um, it's not really a figure that I considered having in my collection, but. It looks that good that I kind of, kind of like, yeah, I'm tempted. I mean, the 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 prices at the moment are too high. You know, the the early import prices are quite a lot, so it's not something that I jump on. I said to you, I think on on O fact that maybe I'll just wait my time and then, you know, if a lot of people are buying this, um, to tie them over till the the you know it comes out, then um, you know there might be some decent deals on them on on the used market um to be honest i i actually although i completely agree with people saying that the the bike didn't play much of a part in the movie and stuff it does look really cool i was having a look at a video of it and i i I really like the bike and it's almost like something that i would consider to put um you know any any character on really or any batman or something like that but uh i think the price i've seen about 400 pounds at the moment that's a bit steep for for a bike um but uh, you know i even thought because i've got the um the modern suit um the keaton one from from the flash on pre-order and i don't really care about you know if it's right or not i i think he'd look quite cool on this bike um but uh, yeah price is a bit high at the moment but i i like it and and i'm not enough of a um i, I enjoyed the movie but i'm not um uh you know that enamored with it to know you know to know whether which is more accurate which isn't um the cape's probably met, probably gonna be garbage um but then like we said you know it's, it's got quite a lot of attachments here so i don't know whether the third party people will be able to um so i did see how that was attached actually and again shout out to mrc uh-huh. collectibles he took the chest plate off yesterday yep. in this video and you can see where it's attached here looks like with okay. velcro so you can so, actually yeah, yeah. detach it which to me then tells me we'll likely see some capes uh being custom, yeah but imagine. and again you know um <clears throat> we've seen some some uh three figures from in art now but we obviously this will be the first one i think that's got a cape so you know we'll need to see what what their um if they can make a decent cape um because hot toys clearly can't um but uh yeah it, it it looks good and i think if you're desperate to have um the representation of this character pick it up and then you can make a decision later on about the um you know you might lose a little bit of money on this but you know they'll still go for um quite good money um but yeah it it looks good looks good you're right because this is one of those figures that if i walked into my local comic book shop tomorrow and it was on the shelf yeah i'd probably still buy it because i i like i really want a pattinson yeah yeah, yeah. it was a cool movie you know yeah yeah and it's a really good figure um and i think if the in art wasn't sort of uh on the cards there wouldn't be no one would say this wasn't great um Mm -hmm. obviously they're just They've just got a, a harder sort of taskmaster to, um, to, to to try and kind of like level up to now. So mm-hmm. you know, definitely. Now I'm seeing Shane in, a, in the chat here. A couple of people are saying that you know competition like this is good for collectors, right? But then when in art first kind of came out and we got to hear some of the some of the figures they were planning on doing, we also heard a lot of people say, "Well, what the hell? Why are you doing the same figures? I want different characters. Mm-hmm. What the heck, right?" Now that we're getting a chance to see some of these direct comparisons, either whether it be the the Pennywise or the Batman here, uh, you know, the Superman, uh, like now that we get to see what competition does for mm-hmm. our six scale collecting, 
what were your thoughts on this Batman versus the inner? Did you have a preference on either? Like, how did you make your decision if you were going to buy this character? Um, yeah, it was a tough one. Like, I, I, I think a few months after this was officially announced, we saw another little flurry of photos there are posts on the Hot Toys official Instagram and Facebook showing the updates. I think they they included the messy hair because it makes mm-hmm. no sense that he had straight kind of bangs yeah. in this because that's Bruce, you know, Bruce Wayne and he, he couldn't even use a head scope for a kick, kick, kick bash Bruce Wayne because he has a mascara on. So then also they had the, the body portions were different. I think the coloring might have been changed as well. The um, the die cast bat around including his chest. I, I, I do think that was his direct results as in earth because they know that the two of them like they're they're they're, they're both from the same same country like they obviously are in the same game it's fairly niche they know like that the other exists like so it just makes yeah. sense that you know they know the other company is uh, going to take some of the market share so they're trying to minimize that and just uh just improve and just be better i don't think, think that's a good thing my thought process on which one i wanted i really really liked the full set um the fact that this batman came with a bunch of stuff and it came with obviously the two different hair pieces and i think the sculpt is good as well and it came with that modular base as well which is nice it could be the steps or it yeah. could be just the uh, like the that. top of the um the, 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 the i suppose the thing he jumps up a building top uh, i like the bin liner kind of wingsuit thing i really like that scene in the movie uh I, I, you know, it's not something you're gonna be your your forever pose, but uh, I, you know, I, I think I might every now and then do it just for the crack. Um, and the signal, I like the fact it was a full package. I like that. But uh, I looked at the in art as well, and I took a good look, and I was like, right, I don't have any interest in the Bruce Wayne. I don't necessarily need a bat signal. I really, really, I was blown away by what I've seen so far from their rooted single pack. So I think if I keep the both of them and I'm happy with the both of them, this is the one I'd pose with the cowl and the other one I'd pose holding the cowl, showing that rooted uh, uh, sculpt off because I just think it looks stunning and hopefully turns out as good. Um, and maybe I get them and I like one better than the other. But uh, I suppose, yeah, that, that was the logic really. I I, I kind of like the idea that half ways you pay for one set or item and you get the signal the figure and the modular base that's fair no all great takes there guys uh and thanks for the comments here in the chat guys as well everybody watching live i totally agree with everybody there you know it's interesting because you know you also mentioned uh shane there that you would potentially have you know two of the same figure in your collection right you'd have the one displaying uh the head sculpt from in art you'd have the other one with the cowl on uh you know two of the same character in the display taking up space and i've said many 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 times that i don't really like that for my own collection i like to try and have one figure representation or one figure representation of the character that i love right and thomas i'm going to go to you on this next topic first buddy okay i'm going to skip you on this one here when i want one figure in my collection and i think about my favorite characters of all time for me the joker Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight is easily one of my favorite characters of all time. If I had to eliminate the majority of my collection, I would still keep a Heath Ledger Joker. Now, I've got the DX11, Hot Toys Joker. I've now got two rooted in art Jokers, and J&D has now shown their Joker. And I really wanted to hate this Joker at first, to be honest, because I just spent, with the Canadian conversion, 1400 bucks six months ago to get that two pack in hand and in my display and then j and d showed us what their figure would do technology wise but they kept giving us these zoomed out shots so you couldn't really see the likeness you know you couldn't really dial in what this character was going to look like and then we finally got a chance to see it before it went up for pre-order now it was a strange way to do it because with the way that g and g kind of did this was they kind of waited till like the 
the 11th hour to actually show us the likeness, and then they put their pre-order up. Now, at first it did feel a little bit misleading because we thought based on the US dollar price points that were being rumored and a lot of their marketing being in English, that there was a pretty good chance uh, that we'd be able to order this directly to the US or Canada as well from the J&D site. Turns out the Pack C that came with the two bodies, the two sculpts, the dogs, the clothing, all of that, uh, and the seamless arms with the articulating fingers uh, was not available uh, to uh, the either the U.S. market or Canadian market, at least. Um, but the Type A and the Type B uh, would be at least available through other party services. So for me, I got my in-art Joker from uh, 1.6 Kit, and I had a pretty good experience there. But of course, 1.6 Kit, for example, is a is a toy reseller. So they need to have a certain margin, they need to have a certain level of increase. So some of the rumored pricing we heard, uh, $800 was the rumored pricing for the Type A, $1,200 was the rumored pricing for the Type B, and $1,700 was the rumored pricing for the Type C. All of those which were staggering prices to begin with, we're now seeing those prices marked up as well uh, because of course you can get them if you want them through third party so the reason that i bring this up pete is or sorry thomas i'll start with first the reason i bring that up and you've been collecting for a really long time so maybe you can help me with this i talked about collecting addiction earlier in the private chats with some of the some of the guys here last week because i have been constantly feeling like i'm chasing the best version of the joker right i do think that this is easily the best likeness at least on the right i don't love the laughing sculpt so for me the type a would be the one i'd consider but even there that's going to be over a thousand dollars us to get it through kit for me once i convert it that's fourteen hundred dollars for one figure mm -hmm. at least within our it was fourteen hundred dollars for two figures plus a jail cell diorama and on and on and on so the value felt a little higher right but to me i felt thomas that like it was almost like addiction kicking in that like why am I not happy enough with my in art one? Why do I feel like even after spending all that money before, I'd even be willing to consider paying this astronomical amount of money for one figure? Is it just because it's my favorite character? Maybe. Or is it that thrill of the chase, that thrill of trying to get the best representation in my collection that's really driving that thought process? And at what point do I need to tell myself, no, that it doesn't make sense, that you be happy with what you've got, move on to the next character? It's a hard question, but I pose that to you first, Classy. When you think about your collecting, it doesn't even have to be about the Joker. How do you know when enough is enough, when when to quit? Well, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, first focus on you, Ben. Mm -hmm. um, now that you're on my couch, um, <laughs> my prognosis is that you're nuts. Okay, let's get nuts, Ben. Get it? You're nuts. That's probably the reason why you keep going after. But I don't know. I think you have a, a, a really big uh, love for Heath Leather, Ledger's Joker. And uh, when I looked at it, the only difference that I saw was what I expected to see was that the paint uh, the white, the white um, uh, stage paint is easier to show it um, kind of halfway on and still showing skin underneath it because um, that's the nature of silicone. You can actually do things, get effects like that and make it look more skin like. And so they were able to get a very realistic look to it. And by comparison, looking at the in art, it was a little bit more crisp. Um, they probably could have could have distressed it a little bit more to get a little bit of the white paint off of the picture I saw. But the um, but yeah, but I I think that for me, it's going to be more about price. I'm not spending eight hundred dollars on a one six figure. I just I I can't justify it and I don't see quite enough of a I don't know I don't see enough to make it worth worth my while um, it looks I mean it looks very good from from the photos I've seen 
Um, but my bang for the buck came from Menhart. Um, you know, th this one may have may kind of edge out a little bit on the realism, um, you know, because of the paint effects. But I don't know, eight hundred dollars for just one figure, uh, or I'm sorry, you said it was a thousand, right? Yeah, for yeah. So with the uh, with the kit, one six kit markup one six at kit, least. Okay. It's yeah. It's so just yeah. Over a thousand so bucks. yeah, thousand dollars for for just one for one figure, and you're not even getting all of the other accessories and things like that. To me, I, I don't necessarily know that I need that. So um, I think price would probably be my my first thing. Even though I, I mean I bought some expensive figures um, before. So I'm not saying I'm opposed to it, but when there's so many others that are available, it's it's hard for me to justify it. But uh, but yeah, I mean they they did a great job. I mean they did a great job, and they've added some great technology like the 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 being able to kind of rotate the chin back and showing the neck is really good. The magnetic eyes is a nice effect, but. How frequently am I going to use that? And if I'm actually just looking at it in a cabinet with a glass case in front of it, yep. am I really going to be looking Double at difference. the eyes or or whether or not I can rotate the, the, the chin back? So it, it, it just seems like to me it might be just a little bit excessive. Definitely. Well said, Classy. Well said. Uh, Pete, I know you said uh, it's mm -hmm. getting pretty late there. Your time, good sir. You're going to roll out. I wanted to say yeah. goodbye and thanks. Uh, thanks for everything this year uh, on Let's uh, Get Nuts, buddy. Yeah, it's been uh, great as, as ever. Thanks for having me on again. And uh, yeah, uh, just wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, catch you all uh, in 2024. We'll get nuts again in 2024, buddy. 100%. 100%. Always uh, guys. love to have you here. You See you again soon, bud. Bye. Okay, bye bye. So then, uh, Shane, I would have the same question for you. Like when, because I know you're a big, you're a big Joker fan. I, I know, like you, you know, earlier last year when Inert started coming out, and, like we even had, uh, you know, an Instagram group between you, know, you and me and Marco and Brad and those guys uh, called the Dark Knight Buddies. Like we, we love these characters, we love these films. But at what point is enough enough? Like, is it the price? Is it just the fact that it's character dilution? Like what? is it that will make your choice at this point? And up on the screen here, I did put the J&D uh, next to a photo of my Inart uh, photo. Uh, I do recognize that I've got the ring on the wrong finger now. I have moved it since to the thumb, just in case anybody's gonna fact check me there, Jose. But uh, what do you uh, what do you think, uh, Shane? How do you how do you make the choice at this point? I think it's uh, basically everything that Thomas said. He, he hit the nail on the head there. Like, I don't think it's worth the price differential. And let's say it does turn out as well as it on the left here as well i mean they, in terms of realism they might edge it out but in terms of the price point i think in art is the best bang for the buck like yeah it's expensive but uh you know expen more expensive than your hot toys and yeah it was put behind a, a paywall for two figures but it's, you still get two figures in the die or for your thousand and uh, the the J and D might might as in the, the regular. I don't care for the smirking sculpt, but just the the regular thing there, the basics there, the sculpt, the paint apps, the proportions, the tailoring, the rooted hair. If it turns out as good as that, they, they they might have the edge there, but I don't think it's worth the extra money. Now, if I didn't have the inert and inert were never on the scene, and I was in the market for a heat letter Joker, Joker, I, I may entertain the thought of the Type A version. Maybe the type B, but not the type C. Absolutely. But yeah, I, I, I'm out on this. I'm happy where I am, I think. I love my inert too. Uh, and you know, at first I was like, yeah, I might still get that type A. The, now that I've seen the price, I'm just like, there's too many things that I want. There's too many things that I like. I don't know if I need to feed the addiction anymore. The other thing I remind myself is like 99% of the time, I'm the only one that ever sees my own collection, right? You guys get a chance to see it in the background, but that like that might as well be a third party Joker behind me. You can't see it up close. Like you don't like I'm the one that gets to determine whether or not it's good enough. And when I turn around in my chair and look at that in art one, I'm always still really freaking impressed. It's when you put them side by side that it's like, okay, yeah, there are some improvements, but on some of my like, you know, comments from my YouTube videos this week, uh, you know, I did a poll on my Instagram and in art one in terms of likeness or, or value or any of the reasons, but 
people voted and it was like it was like over what was it over 70 votes that i had in the in the poll and in art won the polling so you know what i think honestly kind of like you said if maybe you'd missed the in art one the type a is a is a great choice i also don't love uh the smiling sculpt it's funny that we've got nicks underscore collectibles here in the chat he says i love my in art does a good job for me uh because i sent nick this photo uh shane <laughs> uh when it first popped up because this uh if you don't already know is um nick's evil twin uh niche uh, who I think might be making a return tonight, actually, on the WrestleMania over on his channel there. Uh, and I'll pull that slide up here in a moment. Don't love don't love the, the smiling sculpt. But since Nick is here, I did want to shout out one thing to him as well, uh, Thomas and Shane. Uh, he posted some photos of this third-party Venom yesterday that's right from the Spider-Man 3 uh, film, uh, that interpretation of Venom. And while I thought some of the solicitation photos weren't great, I wanted to highlight how good Nick's photos are here with this Venom and how creepy this figure actually looks. So if this has been one that's been on collector's radar as a figure they might be interested in, definitely hit up Nick on his thoughts on the figure itself. But some really, really good pictures here buddy uh, and thanks for letting me show that and again while we're on the topic of nick today is the one six mania reissued now for those of you who aren't not aware the show actually did pop up about two weeks ago now maybe three weeks ago uh, and there were some technical difficulties midstream and right before my character and jose g hernandez tag teamed one of the other teams and clearly we're about to win the fights uh unfortunately the stream had some issues, technical issues, and they had to reschedule it. So tonight is the rescheduling of the show. You can see all of the content creators that we normally see. We've got Will Foxification up there, Collector Joey. We got, uh, you know, Niche down below. Uh, we got <laughs> Austin Nicholas, Loki Collector. You got me in the Let's Get Nuts t-shirt, which thank you for the size of those arms, by the way. I appreciate that. I'm working on it. Uh, Jose G there as well. We got Riley Reviews, Carlos, so many others. Dean the Dream is always going to make a return and looking all, uh, looking all hot in his little outfit there as well. Mr. Dean, if you're listening, love you, buddy. Guys, go over to Nick's underscore collectibles tonight. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, which starts in about 25 minutes. Uh, don't miss it. I will be there in the chat for that. Uh, as a reminder to everybody, I was able to update the slide today. So we do have uh, some new members as of today to the Tough Nut crew here. For those of you who are just joining in, uh, $1.99 will get you member benefits. Some of those member benefits include member badges to go beside your name and all the different emojis. If there's any members still watching, throw the emojis in the chat for me so everybody can see. I want to say a big thank you to the Tough Nut crew here. Alvin J, Collecting Weekly, Money Mendez, Six Scale Mafia, Katera, Feezy's Figures, King Dingling, Sith Scale Collector, Paul Schreiber, The Batman, The Movie Cannon, One Six Figure Focus, Ryan Smith, SpongeBob Squareballs, The Empire Strikes, and Pete Cass. Guys, I will update that slide. The more members that join, we appreciate you. What I'm planning to do with the money from memberships is to put it towards better StreamYard. Right now, I've got the free version of StreamYard. Here in Canada, it costs me about 50 bucks a month. Uh, my channel doesn't make that kind of money yet. So uh, once the memberships help with the money, for the membership uh, or for the stream yard i plan to upgrade it so then that way those of you watching at home on your big screen tvs it'll be in 1080p and we can customize that a little bit better for everybody it'll also mean that i can have more panelists in at one time right now i'm restricted to only having four panelists at a time um, but there's oftentimes people that get left out of the panel because i just don't have the seats so i'm excited to upgrade Streamyard at one point uh, once the members uh, roll in. So thank you for your help and contribution. Uh, again, these are what some of the member badges look like that will appear beside your name if you're a member. Uh, I think my favorite right now is the Terminator uh, or the Teenage Mutant Ninja uh, Nutty Turtle, but I also really like the Live Long and Nut uh, for my Star Trek fans out there. You can also see that Dean did upgrade my Batman, so my Bat Nut begins. That was the first version of the Batman that I had, uh, and he's since given him a ball sack chin, uh, for the dark nut with a K. So why definitely is, an upgrade. Why is Bat Nut Begins? Why is he nude? 
he's not nude. He's just got. A, he's he's just he's just getting into it. You know, that's his night one outfit. Don't worry about it. Okay, <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. And then some of the emojis you guys may have seen in the chat today that we've been all having fun with. Hitting the nut button. We got the happy nut. We got the jumbo nut. We got the uh, tough nut to swallow nut, and the teenage mutant nutty turtles. But just the three of them, because again, as you guys can see, for the final member badge, if you can ever get there, the twenty-four month, you'll finally unlock the Leonardo. Whereas everybody else, you can use the Mikey, uh, the Red, uh, the Raphael or Donatello nuts. Let's be honest. So guys, thank you for supporting the channel there. Shane, I'll go to you first, buddy. One six figure focus. Is there anything that we can look forward to from your channel this week uh, that we can uh, keep an eye out for? Um, yeah. So the, thanks very much for um, for having me. I do appreciate it. Um, and thanks for great to stream with uh, Thomas again. Everyone in the chat as well. That that's uh, super stuff. So. There's uh, three three things I want to plug, really. The first thing is that the Hope Show returns tomorrow um, at uh, 9 p.m. my time, which I think is uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Second thing, then, is, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I did this last year because um, I started it last year because I was going to be away, actually, in Canada for basically Christmas, and I wanted to have some uh, videos on the channel just to keep the content taking over. So there was 12 videos that kicked off on Christmas Day, the first uh, day of Christmas, and then on the 26th, the second day of Christmas on. So there's a video every day in the same time. So I'm going to try and uh, do that again uh, this year. So uh, just have got some of the videos, ideas ready, lined up and stuff like that. It's kind of like my recap of the year, sliced up into little bite-sized videos. So that will be uh, popping up and they'll be scheduled over the next uh, few days. And uh, the last thing then, if you wouldn't mind, one second, get rid of it. I'll remove that there. So the last thing there, I'm just going to put something into the private chat, um, Ben. Basically, it's a link. And the reason I, I would like you to share it, I can't share in the comments because it's a link. It's just a link to a vote. It's a legitimate link. Don't worry if anyone's there. And uh, what I've done is I've prepared a short list of figures that were nominated for figure of the year from data from my own channel, people talking to chat or the community tab or some polls that I ran on my own channel. And uh, it's just basically if people want to cast their vote uh, to basically, if you click on the link, it'll take two seconds and you can cast your vote for uh, figure of the year 2023. And that'll help them form one of the videos from the 12 days of Christmas. So yeah, I'd appreciate that. And uh, apart from that, yeah, thanks very much. Always, buddy. Thanks for joining in for the last episode of Let's Get Nuts for the Year. Uh, Classy Thomas, I know you've been feeling a little under the weather, buddy, so thank you so much for rallying like Bane and coming in today, Clutch, uh, <laughs> to be a great panelist as always, buddy. We appreciate you. Uh, hopefully, I'll have your package tomorrow. Uh, Classy Thomas has sent me the TVA Loki, uh, which I'm very, very excited to get. I'm going to stick it under my tree, and that's going to be my Christmas present, I think, that'll unwrap at Christmas for myself. Yeah, um, you can, anything? You can put them in, the, in your... Um in your um what was it the batmobile you got or the the, uh, the delorean the, the delorean and yeah. take them for a spin hey you know what they're both like they're both time level characters so like so potentially right so i only doesn't need the delorean but it might be fun to take a picture uh, is there anything coming up on your channel buddy or are you just uh just rocking the live streams until you're better what do you what do you yeah like going on? <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just um rocking the live streams and things like that but uh i, I appreciate your uh, let me come on today in my state and, uh, you know, and so, and, and, and I guess one more thing to put to you is that I discovered another reason why you should hold, why you should maybe not go to the Kuno, what was that? The one, the, the, the other, um, Heath Ledger, the, the, um, J and D, the J and D one mm -hmm. is that if you buy the J and D, you won't have the money to upgrade StreamYard. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. no doubt. Yeah. So, so that, that's a different that's, fund. That's, that's a different a, fund. Uh, so that that may be good enough reason, right? There. You're not wrong. <laughs> but no, I'm just teasing. But yeah, I, I appreciate. It. I've been having fun with you this year, and you know, I'm I, I'm looking forward to getting your comments on your on your on your um Loki. I I, I hope you enjoy them. I really enjoy mine my other one so uh, so i'm hoping you'll enjoy that and it's just been a fun year of streaming with you and so yeah but appreciate it and i hope you have a you and shane and pete hope you guys have and chat hope everybody has a safe and merry christmas and a happy new year happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa whatever you celebrate i hope you have a wonderful time with your families 
and just enjoy your holiday absolutely buddy well said well said i did want to share this as well guys uh in the youtube channel there is a link to t public uh if any of you guys notice i'm wearing today my let's get nuts sweater i got a t-shirt and some stickers yesterday which was also exciting uh if you're not a member but you do want to support the channel in other ways uh t public is definitely available to you guys as well i've just recently uploaded the majority of the designs the only one that was under review for whatever reason right now is the spock um but uh once he's up there he'll be showing as well you can get any of these guys made into mugs stickers tote bags t-shirts the whole shebang it's all there for you kind of cool little stickers uh, for me so i might get a couple of these for my own little collection but i just want to share that just in case you guys are interested to find it otherwise you're here on the ben thomas show already so thank you so much for watching one more time this year like we mentioned the next show will be in january next sunday is christmas eve the show the show after that would have been new year's eve not great uh, nights to have streams on so you won't see us again until january for everybody that's tuned in to the Ben Thomas show this year or to any of my friends' channels, uh, any of the guys that I uh, you know stream with collecting weekly, Will Foxification, any of them, uh, we all thank you for your support. Uh, I hope everybody has a, a hop, you know a happy holiday season, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We will definitely be thinking of you guys. Uh, to everybody that became members today, thank you guys as well. I appreciate your support. For that, though, I will say once again, Mr. Shane, we got nuts. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back.